Okay, guys, welcome back to another episode of Every Man Chats with WA Camping Adventures. Now, I can't uh, remember which episode this is just because I've actually pumped out like six episodes in, in the time of releasing the last episode. So I'm really going gung ho on this one. Now, um, <clears throat> I want to, wanna, this, this is a special episode for me just because two things. <laughs> Trying out um, a setup now where I can record on the go. So I can record straight onto the laptop and see if I can do it out in the bush or on camping trips. And then secondly, um, I've been wanting to do this. This is actually one of the highest requested um, guests um, for this podcast. And I'm glad to get him on. And I'm looking forward to getting to know him. Even though we're quite close, I'm looking forward to knowing more about you. But um i'd like to introduce you guys to my brother chris how are you mate very good mate <laughs> you forgot the third point that we're now on budget cuts after matt last week so. <laughs> yeah yeah you straight to the bottom of my the bin. uber yeah yeah <laughs> used up all my yeah. uber credits mate. Uh, to hitchhike here today so <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wanted to explain to you guys listening or watching that um chris is actually one of i've got it written down here too i thought it was quite a funny little thing but um he's one of my biggest silent um supporters he's actually a patreon as well um i like to call him well you're my personal second hand shop so <laughs> i call you chris converters because <laughs> the camera that i'm uh recording off uh that's pointing at chris uh he he gave me that uh you've given me gopros shit dude you've funded half of this channel but you're not getting any of the profits no no we'll you have to uh sit down and talk about that a bit later i think <laughs> Do you know the biggest mistake you made was signing up as a Patreon? Because now you can't ever get on. No, I know. I know. I thought about that the other day. I thought, oh, how do I get out of this without yeah. him seeing me exit? Do you, get, do you see people exit? Yeah, mate. 100%. No, and I'm watching for your name every well, that day. that shouldn't be happening. So the people that are exiting, don't. <laughs> yeah. No, you can do it anonymously. I'm, I'm um, Yeah, oh, cool. I've seen that before. Where oh, they're good. just like, no, nah, all good. Not what we expected. Two that six. bullshit there. No, nah, all good. I've got a little disconnect. bit. Disconnect. <laughs> Yeah, I'm joined. <laughs> uh, but guys, just to start this episode off, I don't usually do this, but I should get in the habit of doing it. It's like a little bit of housekeeping. So um, after a lot of the last podcasts that I've been put out, I've been getting some overwhelmingly, it's going to sound real cocky, positive um, emails from you guys at the info at wacampingadventures.com.au email address. Keep them coming. Bloody loving it. For all you guys who have emailed and actually like told me your stories, I've gotten prior permission uh, to mention your stories because I want to actually mention them on one of the either solo podcasts that I do or with Jamie or something like that. But very, very special. And it means a lot to me that you guys do email in. Now, the other housekeeping is if you guys are loving what you're seeing and you want to support this podcast in any way, have a look in the show notes and also... Uh, consider becoming a Patreon. There's a heap of added extra benefits there if you if you're liking what you're seeing. But anyway, let's get on with this podcast. I've got so much I want to learn about my own fucking brother. Um, also, I need to let you know you can you can swear, mate. This is, <laughs> okay. this is just a chat between you and I. No, I know how good. much you swear. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. <laughs> no, all good. God, you're the uh, you're the most charismatic bloke I know, and it's it's nice in a way to see you a bit nervous. I know um, this is different, dude. It, yeah, no, it is. Um, even though I'm trying to block out the camera and stuff yeah. and just have a conversation, but no, look, I'm I'm okay. I'm no, okay. no, I know. Probably overthinking it a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah. um, I don't know. I, I try to have a yarn with all the lights off and make everyone feel calm. But I know, I know what it's like to be on the other end, but without cameras, to be yeah. on a potty without cameras yeah. and. Not having that control would be hard, you know, because you got to watch what you're going to say. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, but I know we're in a safe space. Exactly, mate. <laughs> Exploit you. The circle of trust. <laughs> um, but look, start off fresh with like fresh news for you, and it will flow on later as to another question I've got for you. Sure. You've just gotten a bloody, a nice new, well, not new, but new secondhand jet ski. Correct, yeah. Um, Tell me about it. I'm constantly on Facebook Marketplace looking at uh, different things. I've got, I'm well, now diagnosed with uh, ADHD. Um, I'm used to saying undiagnosed, but uh, everyone that I told, oh, I've been diagnosed with ADHD. Mm. 
I said, yeah, and what? No I shit. Knew that. We <laughs> no <knew>. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I could have could have saved you the uh, the doctor's appointments and stuff, and told you that from day one. Yeah. But, um, so I'm constantly on there looking at. Look, one one of my, I suppose, um, bucket list things. I'd love a nice center console. Yeah, uh, like the one I've been it. looking for you. Yeah, um, Dexter, you know, the... Slice of life. Yeah, where he... I know that so where well. He, uh, and I remember talking to you about it yep. years ago. Um, and something with an anchor winch. I'd love to pull up at Rotto and just yep. press a button, anchor down, um, rather than mucking around and trying to get an anchor up by yourself while you got the wife and kid... Um, yeah. And my child on, on board, but... Um, See any but, flaws in a centre console, though? Um, Reprieve from fucking sun. That's what no, I worry uh, about. 100%. One of the um, guys at work that I work with, um, that's what he constantly says. He goes, oh, it hasn't got enough shade. But, I mean, you look at the setup that Brad's got. He yeah. had one bimney, and the boat's that long. He's put another one on the front. Yeah, on the you can front. connect them on and oh, fast, looks, too, in the rod holders. Yeah, absolutely <clears> amazing. <throat> and it's fully shaded. So, mm-hmm. um, obviously, the last boat I had was whoa, roughly three and a half, four years ago. It was the Bayliner, the... Um, uh, bow rider yeah bow rider discovery how big was that uh 21 and a half foot yeah oh okay so, so yeah decent that was de- a big decent boy. side plenty of yeah. plenty of deck space on it um had a good stereo on it barbecue on the back yeah um but yeah boats come, are a big part of your life I, I love it they always um, have been always have been yeah um you know my, my, our cousin brad yeah um, oh, and Steve and, and Jared and all that. Everyone, Constantly yeah. on the boat. Like, I used to stir them up at every family event that we'd have saying, <laughs> you wouldn't go out in the boat right now. Like, it'd be 11 o'clock at night. And sure enough, we're down the boat ramp at 12 o'clock or at the fuel station fueling up, getting some bags of ice and, and jumping on uh, on the water at 12 o'clock at night. So, mm, best time. Oh, it is. It's, mm. um, and, yeah, all of them know the river like the, uh, the back of their hands. Yeah, so. I know. I must admit, eh, the more you drive it, it's like you can, I, I reckon I've come through in the tinny in like my dinghy, you know, like um, Bayswater and yep. shit, pitch black, and you just know where you're going. You know exactly where you're going, especially where it splits off near Mayland. Nah, there. you well, can get caught. I, I've come and got to there. <laughs> Go shallow super quick. I had a little, oh, it was probably a 15 footer, um, uh, geez, what was it? Is that the uh, ski boat? The, the ski, orange the orange ski boat, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm sh- I think it was a Pride mm-hmm. um, stiletto, Pride stiletto. Yeah. Um, had a oh, massive engine on the back, um, Johnson <laughs> 1152 stroke. And the f- oh, I probably I took it out three times and then ended up blowing it up. Um, <laughs> and then got towed back by Darren really gently to the boat ramp. <laughs> Real gently? Yeah. yeah no, that- that's a word not in his vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, I remember me and Brad sitting in the back and oh, Darren was towing us that fast. It was up on the plane. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> and then I was working at Honda Shop at the time. We had a, a, a marine um, the branch, oh, yeah. um, which was down in Frio. Um, dropped it off there and I asked them to quote up on it, on what's wrong with it. Um, a week went by, touch base. I said, how are you going? Yeah, I'm still looking into it. And then I think it was two weeks later, they gave me a call saying it's it's ready to pick up. I said, oh, okay, cool. What, what was wrong? I said, what do you mean? We, we've done a complete engine rebuild on it. So oh. I, I, I didn't know about that. So I don't know. Look, geez, it was that long ago. I don't know. I think it was like $4,000, which yeah. was probably about six months wages back then. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. <laughs> um, but I remember having to go to Sean and say, oh, I didn't ask for that. I didn't, dude. I didn't know they were going to rebuild it. It was basically in there for diagnostic. Um, I don't have the money to pay it. So yeah. I think he let me pay it off. And, um, but, yeah, I remember they said, oh, yeah, we needed it out of the workshop. So that, that was cool. I, yeah. I paid what I could and then uh, paid the rest off. Extend your contract too. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Keep you around, boy. Exactly. Box of veggies every week. <laughs> but, um, yeah, fully rebuilt the guy that done it, I forgot his name, but it was immaculate afterwards. Yeah. Like you took the, I got all new stickers for the cowling and all that, and you you took the cowling off, and it was just all the electrics had mm. been redone and stuff. The only thing that stuffed up on that in the end was the um the hydraulic rams. But anyway, going down a rabbit hole. But no, it's um, normal. <laughs> yeah, you, you Kamagata. Yeah. Oh, no, no, Kamagata oh, yeah, with, yeah, sure, with yeah. the jet ski. Uh, sorry, with the the ski boat. I mean, I think I had three mates on, and it was a dead still night. It was. A mill pond, like yeah. 
and I think this the moon wasn't out, and all you could see was the reflection of the water and mm. the, the banks. Fucking beautiful. And for Department of Transport that are listening, um, I was <laughs> obviously <laughs> doing the speed limit. Uh, no, it's five knots at night. It is at night, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I definitely wasn't doing that. I was probably doing <laughs> thirty-five knots. And mucking around with the throttle and launching it out of the yeah, water. Yeah. And yep, coming around that bend past Maylands. And then I thought I was looking and questioning it and I thought, no, nah. and I've still got a like three quarter throttle and it's like and then all of a sudden I could see the shore and it's like oh, shit fuck. reverse. <laughs> the um, feeling eh? Oh, it was shocking. Um <laughs> But I was lucky. We yeah, no one got hurt or anything. I, I think we we Pulled up pretty, pretty soft up on the yeah. Because I was going to say it's muddy, so, you know, silty, soft yeah. shit there mostly. Oh, and look, and I think there was a couple of, luckily, um, some old trees that were, I think, pretty water damaged at that time. So the old paper bark. Yeah, I think yeah, I think I, th- I think they uh, acted <laughs> as a bit of a cushioning system in the end, but <laughs> no um, one ended up out the boat. Nah, luckily not. Jeez, I tell you, it could. Uh, I was only talking about it the other day. The stupid stuff I used to do on a boat. We'd yeah. be cruising through Goodwood and. I don't know. The boys would be doing like forty knots through Goodwood because you're trying to trim it up and yeah, yeah. be the fastest boat on the <laughs> water. And I'd just do stupid shit like strip down to me jocks and jump out the side of the boat with no one knowing that I'm going to do it. And then you know, I'd, I'd just picture in my head them looking around going, "Where the hell did Chris go?" He's back there. Then you're um, about the water, the old twig and berries are out. No, exactly. Yeah, I don't even think I had jocks left on that day. Fuck, but. I've done that before at South, um, South Perth foreshore. Um, and I've jumped out the boat while it's going. Yeah. And I've like misread the depth. Oh, 100%. And my head's hit the ground. Like, oh. not hard, but I've cut my ear on the shell because it's very shelly oh, around there. Geez. Yeah, just slit it open. Um, Stupid shit. But now, with, oh, I don't know, I suppose it's called maturing. But now you think of, imagine I jumped out and there's a bit of driftwood in the, yeah. in the water and yeah, I hit. Fucking oath. I'm diving out of a boat doing mm. 40 knots and. Like, no, I know. End up in a wheelchair, you know, stuff like that. And Weird that transition because you start, sh- you, you you know, you're not fucking immortal. No, hundred percent. And I right. think that's become more at the forefront of my mind after having Bella. a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah. course, man. Yeah, we'll get into that as well. That journey, but back to <laughs> back the jet, to the jet ski. ski. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what mate. is it, man? Uh, so it's a 2023 Cedo GTX 300 Limited. It's a fucking beauty. Nice dark. Green, eh? It is. Um, I had a run in with someone on the water last Saturday. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, if he's watching, mate, you, you're just silly boy. But yeah, he was heading up the wrong way in the channel. So I, I put in at South Perth foreshore. Yeah, that's um, where you obviously cut your ear open. <laughs> Cood Street, because it's a quiet boat ramp, and I hate people watching me put it yeah, in so, and yeah. reversing and shit like that. So. Put it in there, then I was heading across the channel, um, and this dinghy was just going the opposite way. And I thought, okay, he's going to move, but he didn't move. And where I'm getting to, the, the colour, he turned around and he said, uh, why don't you fuck off in your, your army-coloured jet ski? <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, mate. I won't tell you the rest of the, it, the it conversation. Tracks, but, yeah. oh, it tracks to jet skiers, I reckon, trouble. <laughs> no, that, and that's the thing. we got such a persona out there that, oh, they're all... Which I am, but they're all dickheads. Yeah, it's your second jet ski too, I should mention that. It is, yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, it's an absolute weapon. It, I, I love it. Um, well, it's, it's you in a, in, a, in a jet ski, isn't it? Like, nice sound system. That's a, yep. that's a fucking prerequisite for you. Absolutely, yeah. So and it's something um, you can take Bella and Marie on and cruise down the river. Yeah, look, I'm probably not 100% confident in taking both of them on the jet ski at the yeah, same time. Yeah, and fair call. I went out. I think it was last Saturday, and Bella said, oh, can I come out? Um, but I said, look, on the next calm day... Yeah, not yet, till I just need to... We'll get mum to bring you down to the shore, and I'll just put yeah. around on the shore. Yeah, I know, know, yeah, not a dick um, like that now. You were. But, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, <laughs> um, yeah, it's an absolute weapon. Absolute weapon. It's, so why'd you go that over another boat? Um, probably out of stubbornness somewhat because i don't know i think the center console i want is just a little bit out of my price range yeah, at see. the moment yeah um and then for what i could afford um 
I've fallen into the the jet ski yeah yeah um, beauty price range so no it's interesting because for what you got that for it's funny how everyone has their own thoughts or needs it's like I can't see myself ever owning a jet ski yeah I just can't I don't know what it is I'd love to do like an island mission like we talk about oh absolutely I mean I, I, I've said that I went out last Saturday um, that was a trip to Roto yeah that was just oh, early morning amazing yeah honestly and it's I know you've got a question coming up and it, it will revert yeah, back to this yeah. but it is my outlet fucking oath um, I'm up early anyway because that's my body clock yeah. Um, and even when I had my old jet ski and you asked Brad or even when I went back at the Honda shop they had two jet skis that the shop owned um, and Sean was good used to let me um, use them whenever I, I asked um, so me and Brad I took them out and this is where people have got to block their ears as well we took them over to Rotto back when I was at the Honda shop which was oh, I, I didn't and I, honestly I didn't yeah. know at the time it was illegal to take jet skis over so I would never have known that. No, yeah. but um, they've only recently changed the law on it, and you just need a um, EPIRB with a Flares GPS yeah. enabler on it, or whatever it is. Uh, a flare, um, which I've got like a LED yeah. bright one, which I was, was going to say that about. new style. Yeah, yeah, well, it saves you renewing them every two years. Know. They go out of out of um, thing. You never use them, and it's one hundred and twenty. 20 bucks down the drain every time. That's so. like, Dad, Dad's like, nah, I've still got flares. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, until you get pulled over and, or, yeah, until you're in the shit and it just fizzles in your hand and burns your hand. <laughs> but um, that and uh, marine radio. So I've just got a little handheld one, so. Oh, really? Yep. And that oh, now gets you um, off offshore, so. How big is it lengthwise? Um, I think they're around about three and a half metres. So what's that? 10 feet or something nine nine foot oh yeah not good that's fucking conversion. big that's it, a it big is. vessel it, isn't yeah, it it is yeah it's a it is a big big jet ski yeah um but dad obviously saw the post that i put on facebook and said oh should you be doing that on your own but honestly you pick your day anyway um but the jet oh, ski's that big i just had not Stable that i was being fun. reckless but yeah not one inkling of thought danger. went through my head oh shit i'm in i'm in trouble here yeah be careful it's just it's amazing yeah it's a really like the difference between a 350 banshee and like maybe like a fucking like a big farm quad like a lot more stable yeah absolutely feels like a bigger vessel oh and it's got the power there to pull out Mm -hmm. and and, you know hit a wave you know if you've got one coming side on you could quickly power what they're fucking built for yeah absolutely for waves aren't they yeah they are are. (laughs) you're doing flips in no time so um no it is it is a great jet ski um and sido i look forward to hearing from you very soon (laughs) for our collab collaboration Collaboration. um next thing i wanted to talk about before i have to well it's still a while before i have to check these cameras Cameras, um like i i don't actually know i reckon it would have been from since i was well i reckon your fj40 i want to talk about your car journey but your fj40 would have i've mentioned on this podcast for one of the cleanest yeah i've ever seen ever and i reckon that got me a lot into full driving but i wanted to talk about your car journey um up until now you haven't had that many cars would you say that no um no i don't know five or six yeah pretty normal amount i think the thing is i haven't even told everyone how old he is compared to me um (laughs) you're five years older than me and he looks fucking half my age he just ages so well you everyone's always said that hey kid kid face yeah Um, kid kid face kid brain yeah (laughs) yeah about four years old in the head i think bella's more mature than i am ADD fucking yeah. just can't concentrate yeah I, I'm not too bad these days but yeah. well, now that I'm medicated but um, <laughs> but yeah no, I think the first car I had was a 1974 oh, geez, not sure on the year but a whole, uh, Toyota Corolla there's special things about every car you've had like that I remember like each time you go I used to top that fucker up with oil, oil like yep, just yep. used to leak like a sieve well I started my bricklaying apprenticeship straight out of oh, that's high right, school dude. yeah I forgot about that I the day that I could go and sit my test for my driver's license um, was the interview for TAFE yeah got you um, and I said to dad no I'll, I'll go and do the TAFE interview rather than go and get my license <laughs> um, but end up getting my license i don't know a couple of weeks later or something so um yeah so straight out of school into a bricklaying apprenticeship and that was the first car i bought it was a hundred dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah out and, of the quokka problem and i think 
I think it was through someone at no, I think it was through someone at um, the TAFE. I think I can remember something grandparents or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember exactly, but a hundred dollars. <laughs> I think at the time I was earning like three or four hundred dollars a week, or <laughs> probably not that extreme, but um, and it was a timing chain cover seal that needed replacement. Yes. And I remember yeah. <clears throat> Frank, who was a, a, our mechanic at the time. Um, it was eighty dollars to fix or something. I just couldn't afford it. It was just, and I didn't go and ask mum and dad about it, <laughs> uh, or for the for the money. But um, yeah, I end up. I reckon I'll probably spend a hundred dollars a week on purchasing oil. <laughs> and again with um, from Marlowe's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it was Marlowe's back in the day. Um, I should have just put a drip pan underneath and caught the oil and then Each tipped night. it back in. Yeah, just but. <laughs> Stupidly, I just <laughs> let it drip. Whatever, on Dad's lawn. Oh, whatever <laughs> oil was on special that week was <laughs> going in it. Oh, it was oh, fucking eight dollar canola oil. Canola. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, you know, you just uh, I should have just not driven it for a week and then paid the eighty bucks and got it all fixed. But, <laughs> the um, um, the main one for me was fuck. I want to talk about the FJ forty, but I also want to talk about the Ford Escort. The yeah. So back. after after that one. <laughs> Well, you forgot about that one. I had to remind you. I know, dude. But um, so after the Corolla, oh, I bought a Ford Escort, which yes. is, oh, shit. I think like 500 bucks or something. It was crazy. Um, Fucking shagging wagon. No, well, they used to oh. call it something else, a, um, a finger wagon. Well, oh, okay. George used to call it that anyway. <laughs> I don't know what George would call that because he'd fit in the back of it easily. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, I mean, the family joke was... It used to get that hot that I grabbed the rear air vent and yeah, turned it around. That's it. Thinking that you could get rammed air into the cab a bit yeah. quicker, but... It doesn't work like that, though, does it? I don't know. I, I think swear it it's did. like a snorkel. I don't think it goes straight in. I think it. you need that suction. So if it goes over, it creates that... Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but come on, say, house speakers. Yeah, so I had the old cassette deck <laughs> in that. And then, I don't know, it's from a... And it wasn't probably the crawler. It was probably the start of my audio thing but i had oh, to have yeah, mate, big yeah. stereo system always has been hasn't it yeah um but i had and again with the budget i had a massive um speaker box with two pissy little six inch speakers in it that took up basically the middle of the car yeah and then i found on the side of the road these two house speakers yeah like hi-fi speakers hi-fi towers, speakers towers. Yeah. but they had like 15 inch woofers in them and shit but no amps, nothing like that. I don't even reckon they work, but... Just like fucking it. red and the old red wire, the turning thing at the back, you know, yeah, that, to get yeah, the dials. That's it. And then... Oh. Yeah, so I used to have a crank and stare on that. And then... All I remember was fucking And Justice for All and, and Justice, Rage Against the Machine. And Rage Against all Machine, that, yeah. All that, that in there. That was... Oh. I bought those cassettes. Oh, I didn't buy them, but... I took those cassettes from WA Selvage and Morley. Um, and you too? Yeah, I think U2 Disco was there. Tech. Oh, Disco Tech, yeah. Um, oh, but the, the shit I used to get up to on that. Luke, you know, Luke Murray. Um, yeah, yeah. He could tell you some stories. I remember picking him up from school, him and his mate, and he jumped in the back, and it was a wet day, and I'm ripping handbrakes. <laughs> and he, like, I don't know what happened, but he, he flipped over in the back, and I, I think he ended up cracking a rib or something like that. <laughs> Poor bloke couldn't speak like for like an hour. He was that winded. Oh shit! And then before um, uh, uh, Ascot Waters is there. That yeah. whole housing estate. There used oh, to be. Fuck, dude. Oh, there yeah. was a baseball field there. Yeah, I think it was Perry Fields or something. Yeah, like that. right. Huh? That got bowled over, and then it was just dirt, and like mountains of dirt and and stuff like that. And me and Luke again <laughs> took me Escort because we thought it was a four drive. And end up getting stuck in this uh, bit of a muddy terrain oh, kind of thing. Fucking love. And then all these old people are walking their dogs past. Oh, we're going to ring the cops. And we said, oh, we're just up here looking for our dog. Our dog's missing. <laughs> we had no fucking dog. There was no dog. Oh, what's your dog's name? Oh, little uh, Lassie. <laughs> That's the thing that came to our head. And we're, we're spending, yeah. Luke was a fucking rascal too. Oh, it? absolutely. Yeah, the, the the stuff we've done together, it's nuts. I remember um, I was playing the club championships at Maylands. Down at Maylands, I remember you rocking up and leaving, doing a lawn dig as you drove off <laughs> on that little patch there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lawn well, digs, where are they now? 
They're not oh, a thing anymore, are they? No, they shouldn't have been. It's just... <laughs> oh, stupid I shit I used to are. do. It was fucking good times, mate. Um, and then there was a U. And again, with Luke, I remember... HQ. Yep, yep. HQ, Belmont. Belmont Column um, shift. Column shift, three-speed, 186 red motor. Oh, um, that's right, man. Yeah. It had just stock rims on it. And then again... Remember, you're I, always doing axles in that. Oh, 100%. But it had standard rims and tyres on it. And then, I don't know, one yeah. day, literally pulling down Kidman yeah, Ab- yeah. Avon Guildford, and we lived just just there, it was a, a Kingswood or something that yeah. had been abandoned. So I rang Luke. I said, Luke, <laughs> get on. over here. I need a hand. Bring bring a couple of bring wheel a braces. <laughs> oh, God, 12 slotters. Ki- killed for this now. <laughs> uh, 12 slotters, yeah. yeah. And they looked mint. I had no idea, and I put them on. And started driving, and I thought, what's that noise? And I ended up driving over to Frank's, the mechanics, yeah. and he goes, yeah, you put the wrong wheels on the... So I had, uh, like, a shallow offset on the front, oh. which was rubbing against the brake disc. <laughs> or the drum, sorry. And, yeah. <laughs> surprised uh, I didn't Oh, what a fucking laugh. Myself. See, I never knew this shit. It's, it's yeah. hilarious, man. So, um, yeah, Frank said, just change the front to the back, and you're good to go. So we were good. Took it home, gave it the old auto soul, and she was sparkling, ready to go. Yeah, it was a fucking beauty. Yeah, it was. Well. Yeah. And it had a good stereo as well. Yep, yep. Again, with the or speaker boxes. No, nah, Brad and Steve knocked me up a speaker box that went... Behind the head. Highly illegal again, but went behind the head of the... Between the window and the, the bench seat. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes when I have to jam the brake on, it would... It would literally end yeah, up yeah. in the passenger seat after <laughs> smacking me in the back of the head. Darkness! Yeah. And prison <laughs> Oh, fucking I, tell you good t- I remember you letting me drive that up and down the driveway. No, oh, I don't reckon I'll let you. you no, probably just, probably just anyway. jumped yeah. in, learnt the um, old clutch yeah, in, the, uh, in the driveway. I think yeah, I did. No, I think it was actually. Fucking good car, man. And then after that was the FJ40. Yeah, fuck. How did you find that? I, do you know what? Um, I actually do not know the story behind this. But, um, Brad, I would have fucking. At that time, um, I was working with Brad and Stephen, so yeah. I only done, I don't know. That's right, house transporting yep. up in Telfer. Yep, so I'd done probably a year of my apprenticeship and absolutely hated it. I just, yeah. I could probably blame my boss for it, the old Italian bloke. I like, had. Bricklayer, yeah. Yeah, yeah had he probably was a eight, one, yeah, yeah. eight bricklayers working for him and it, I was just a cheap labourer for him. Yeah. Um, I had, so different back then to what it is oh, now. Oh, absolutely. So fuck yep. you, get to work. Oh, exactly. And so it fuck all money. It probably left a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah. Um, and. Honestly, I don't know how you and Dad do it, but laying, sitting there and laying a brick to a line all day, I just, and I think that's probably when I had undiagnosed ADD or ADHD, Boring. Yep. I, I couldn't do it. I could yeah. not do it. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Crazy you think yeah. that because I think to myself, I love it. Like, oh, I know. Love I, the honestly. Variety. But, <coughs> no, absolutely. Brick days. Um, we, had, we had heaps of them, didn't we? Oh, just. Freak of a job, man. Oh, absolutely. And, Labouring especially. Oh, the the fact I hated... I got up every single day, asked Marie, and I sat at the end of the bed pulling my socks on, and I said, I hate this job. No, and I, I don't blame you. Labouring's a prick of a job. Day. Yeah. And, then, and Dad wasn't the easiest to work for. He's a very hard worker. Yeah, like, always uh, uh, had absolutely. that. Absolutely. And looking back on it now, I was a, I was a little prick. <laughs> I, I, was, I would look for any excuse to try and have a blue with Dad or you. <laughs> so you'd say, no... Nah, Pack up the mix and we're going home. Still like, do. Fuck yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> See us. <laughs> Even like I'd be sending dad fucking weather reports for New Zealand, yeah. hoping that he didn't see it. And nah, dad, there's fucking massive rain clouds coming. Sixty percent chance. And you look outside and it's blue sky. But uh, I'd, yeah. We'll just go in, eh? That was his. Yeah, yeah. We'll come in. in. We'll do we'll a couple of hours, out. mate, and then uh, we'll, we'll um we'll head home. Yeah, they're passive yeah, aggressive. The whole day. I remember okay. Trevor Warren's job, one of Trevor's, yep. I had fucking gastro in me white ute. Said, yeah. And Dad's like, come in. So yeah, just show your face. Gastro. You charge, charge you out. Yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you for the day, he reckons. <laughs> Hopefully Trevor, Trevor's... Trevor Warren, uh, yeah. mate. Yeah. Oh. Uh, abs- I know we're going down rabbit holes. This is what happens when you you interview someone with uh, ADHD. Nah, mate. Because it happens in all my episodes. You, you too, scatter, so but, stress. Um, what a gentleman that what, guy was, hey? He was a big fucking role model, eh? He's a good man. Good Trevor builder. Warren. Well, Trevor Warren, Trevor Warren, and Jesh, I and Jesh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was a uh, a really nice guy, wasn't he? Oh, God. Um, oh, but man, I wanted to talk about the FJ40. FJ40. I also wanted to talk about the Ford. Remember, was it York? 
Yep. I mean, what was it, man? Yeah. Tell so, me. full draft club. Back to when we got that. I was working up at Telfer at the time. Yep. Well, mainly out of Port Hedland. Um, and like I said, for my cousins who transport houses. Um, and they purchased all the housing out of Telfer Gold Mine. Yeah. And then we had to basically relocate it from there. So, wherever it ended up. But we had a base camp set up in Wedgefield in Port Hedland. Yep. Um, and, geez, what was I? 18, nine, 19 years of age. Um kind of left to my own devices. I might have got yep. kicked out of the goal, uh, out of the actual mining site for Been speeding through a car park. But yeah. look, <laughs> we were only talking about this the other day. I might have. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely did. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And I've been sent home on the old uh, Greyhound from Port Hedland a couple of times as well from, from my uncle. But anyway. Um, so, yeah, I think we come back on one of the, the swings. I think we used to go up there for bloody five, six weeks at a time mm. and then come back and have three days off. And that then, was fucking dri- drive-in, drive-out. Yeah, basically. <laughs> a yeah. long, long trip. Oh, right? and this is what I mean. Like, I've got so much stuff I could say, but just great memories. Good to- oh, I was going to say that, that as well. Eh? 100%. It, it was... You used to come back cashed up. I remember that. Yeah, but... And honestly, that was Steve on Braddo. Um, in my here, like, yeah. No, but not even oh, that. Oh, almost... Uh, save money set yourself up and all that kind of stuff um which was was great advice at the time but you're a young kid oh you know and all of a sudden i've got a lot better money and and um i suppose no brain between my ears to what to do to it so saved up saved up saved up um and that they like the business bought a um coaster bus and we had a a big stereo on that so We'd all take dr- turns at driving that up to um, Port Hedland every time, and back to Perth every time, and it was just oh, we had we had some laughs on that. Pull up know. on the side of the road, start a oh, fight, you know, and yeah, stuff up. like that. And then I don't know. There was one time we took up two cars, so me and Brad are in the other car. Someone was driving the bus, and then <coughs> me and Brad are mucking around in the car. <laughs> we go to overtake, and then I'd hold hold a sign up on the window saying "bomb on the bus," like <laughs> like speed, speed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a bomb on the bus. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Cans. There were just cans. Yeah. <laughs> You've got movie, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll talk. Night. I'll talk Brad into coming on here because I'd fucking love for you guys yeah. together. It'd be a really good laugh to actually just Cause, bounce uh, back. He, he, we even talked about it the other day. I used to travel with him a lot, and even being in the Volvo truck he was in, I used to muck around, and it had. You could uh, in the sleeper cab. You could pull the blinds across, but I don't think it had blinds on it. So it had all the little, I don't know, the curtain rail, yeah, yeah, and the, the plastic things. Yeah, and I remember hanging a pair of me jocks over there and just <laughs> flicking it over to him, and he's driving him, hits him in the side of the head, pair of me, Used. pair of me jocks. But he, he just grabbed it, threw it out the window, came away, and oh shit, my only pair of jocks. But um, yeah. So again, um, got back. On one of the swings, and I think Brad Brad was mad mad keen into the old quokka back then. Um, <laughs> yeah, found auto trader as well. Yeah, would have nearly been that era. Yeah, it would have been, but I, I'm sure auto trader was a bit more. <laughs> yeah, your classic, you know, mu- muscle cars and yeah, um, all the like. But um, we ended up well, Brad found it, and then I think it was me, Brad, and Steve. I went and had a look at it, and it was um, in Midvale, a mechanic. Um, he was such a nice guy um, as well, um, like a Polish guy or something like that. So um, went and looked at it. Obviously, it was Mickey Mouse because um, a mechanic had owned it, and he'd just done the um, – oh, I forgot the, mm. the trip that he'd done. I, I think it was a gun barrel highway or something oh, like that. In wow. it. Um, but this thing was immaculate, absolutely immaculate. I think it had the cheese cutter original rims yep. on it. Yep, I do remember but that. But again, as I know you've said in previous um, podcasts as well, the boys give you the shirt off their own back. Yep. So I think we went and picked it up. Pull it up. Come on, yeah. we'll do this. We'll I think the this. next day we had white Sun Razor rims on it, CSA big fat tyres, Sen- CSA centre caps. From uh, I think I went and picked up so many sets of those. In from Belmont. Uh, Belmont, yeah, <laughs> on, on the bend there. Um, yeah, and they, they helped me, you know, um, it was, build it up. That, that was um, a, a different... Like a different time for you, are you? You almost gone from the escort to the Ute, and then it was time for you to 
go back to full because you'd always been full driving but yeah it was like a different you looked after that car a lot more than anything i remember yeah you'd always looked after things it, it was probably a next level as well and, and it's funny like i look at brad and what they do now and you know they, they buy a boat and and carpet it out before like in the crawler i'd done that same thing like it's stuff i used to do but i, I just i turn lazy in a way like, yeah I don't, I don't do that stuff anymore, but Brad just froths on that stuff, you know. He's so good at doing it. He but. turns it well, though. He actually does fucking oh, well like that it, boat he? that they've got now, it's just, yeah, absolute ripper. But, um, yeah, there wasn't much to do to that car. Oh, right. So I was going to ask <clears> you that because it was, <clears throat> the paint job was immaculate. Yep. I remember everything being immaculate. Yep. <clears throat> um, and it had the fold-up uh, window on the back. So oh, that's right. At the I time. fucking do remember that now. Because I, I also, actually, while I was up in Headland, I bought a quad <laughs> up there, the YFM 200 Farmy. Blue one? Yep. Yeah, I do remember that. Driving yep. that up and down the um, driveway as yep. well. Yeah, and the old Stator shut itself on it, so had to get that replaced. But, um, yeah, it's I intrigual. used to, we, yeah, I we bought, a, um, uh, bought a trailer, so I'd tow that around. We used to take that down, I don't know, um, Abernethy Road. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm right over around there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I had the fly racing sticker on the back window of the FJ40. Fucking hell. But Good memories. I'd have to fold that up and then the gas shocks on it were, were they'd clapped out. So I think I drilled a hole through the, or Brad might have drilled a hole through the actual rod itself and then we just put a bloody a five, in inch, no, five inch nail <laughs> nail in there. So yeah, I had a big crank and stereo on that thing as well. Yeah, yeah um, no air con. No aircon. It was just the old kick panels down yeah. at the foot. Yeah, I remember that. Um, what motor was that? Two F. Yeah. Now you was it a six or a four? Me. Oh shit! I'm gonna say it was a six because it was quite powerful. No. No. Maybe four. I know. I used to drive it down to Bustleton all the time because um, Brad and um, his family had a uh, holiday house down at Peppy Grove. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But I think it only it would max out at about 80, 90 clicks. Okay. Just because of the gearbox. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Um, but that, what do you mean, four speed? Yeah, I think it was a four mm-hmm. speed. Um, but reliable as? Did you ever have any problems no, with that? that was fine. Because everything was stock on it. There, there were cars at the time that had the V8 conversions in it, the Chevs yeah. and all that, which Brad and Steve O'Connor steered me away from. Yeah, gotcha. I'd never, I still haven't had a V8 car in my life, which is probably why I'm still here, because I was peanut in every Fuck, other car. you haven't, have you? No. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose they steered me away from that. Oh, and, I'd love and then you to send me some photos too. I'd like to put them up. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Post them up here. Yeah, th- yeah, yeah. I, might I, still I be on I've, the website. Yeah. What's that website do? I don't know, but the York, first first trip. York, yeah, something? it was a full drive club that. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I got onto it, but um, yeah, I know. Went Fuck. went along and it was awesome. Like those sun rages probably had a I don't know a 30, 30 centimeter twenty five centimeter offset. Yeah. And I got that thing bogged in mud where it was just flat. It was just <laughs> filled with mud, the, um, the the rims and shit. I was pulling mud out of that for a year afterwards. It was. I, I don't think I'd done another mud trip after that. It, yeah. Mud just got everywhere. Because I remember thing. them, even thinking back then, how the fuck did you find out about a club like that? Well, there wasn't oh, Facebook and shit, No, nah, not Facebook. Maybe the introduction is MySpace at that MySpace, time. I think yeah, it was. It would have been MySpace, actually. But I think they had a website or something like that. Mm. Um, yeah, and Brad Brad might have had his um, the Land Cruiser mid wheelbase as well, and he might have oh. said something to me. I can't remember. Fuck man, all these. I'd love to get Brad on. Oh, uh, absolutely great. Yeah, he's, um, um, just reminded me too. I didn't even put anything about Lone Star in here. <laughs> Can, Some of the last we used to have there. Uh, that'll be a second podcast, I reckon, mate. Yeah, no, nah, we'll, we'll touch on that next time. But that, I mean, that's how I got to meet Luke, and he's still a mate. Yeah, after all this time. Good fucking, was yeah, one of my uh, groomsmen in my wedding. Yeah, exactly. And I wasn't in his. <laughs> Red. Thanks, Luke. <laughs> Dude, it's probably pretty good timing, actually. I might, yeah, check, I'll check that shit, and then uh, cool. I've got another question to ask you. Cool. All right, buddy. I wanted to talk about your journey, dude. Like, because you've gone, obviously, you started off. Um, you know, bricklaying apprenticeship, went up to Telfer, always been blue collar up yep. to like pretty much what, what would you say? 10 years ago? Um, yeah. Eight, 10 years ago. Yeah. It's, it's gone so uh, quick. Well, no. How long have I been there? Um, six or oh, six years. At, uh, at the yep. company now. Yeah. And then what about the Honda shop before that? Oh uh, yeah, I suppose that's, 
Yeah, I suppose that's white collar. Um, I was there probably four, it was four a, years. A very nice transition. If you think about, if you think back, so I went from those fucking hard days up at Telfer, you know, even yep. bricklaying as well. That they were tough, like busy times, but also fucking very hard working days, like labouring and shit oh, like that. Yeah. You got a good appre, especially where you are now. It's a good. You got a good appreciation for what a lot of tradies and that you know go through. Yep. Um, Probably, is, especially in the industry I'm now. Um, you I think, still are in the building industry, yep. which I'll, I'll clarify, yeah. Um, where <coughs> I think probably at more of a management position yes. that I'm in now, yep. a lot of the people on the on the front line or on the ground would look and think, who are these people making decisions? Where I've, I've dipped my toe in... Like I started as a, a site start supervisor. Yeah, yeah, yep. Slabs for them and stuff like that. Um, and then I kind of said, "This isn't for me." Like I was just sitting in a car, not really. I don't know, playing on my strengths, which is talking to people and, and building relationships. It, it is, yeah. Which I had with all my trades um, that that I'd call upon, like my granos and um, all the other um, provider, like the service providers that we use, like our plumbing companies and and. Um, pest companies and stuff like that. Mm. Um, but I, I'd definitely get a kick out of, I suppose, the, like a, if we'd get a difficult client or something like that, engaging with them, talking to them, walking them through. Problem solving. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, which is where my strengths were, I, I suppose. So, um, And obviously before that, I worked at Mercedes. Um, oh, fuck, man. See what I mean? I yeah. always forget this shit, you know? Yeah. So I was there for... I think the same time, four or five years. Did you enjoy years. that job? Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, I felt no, like it, you did, hey? It was. Yeah, it was a good job. Happy as fuck um, there. Yeah, honestly. So I started as a LCV, which is the van side, a service advisor there. So I'd, I'd check in all the cars and go over the cars and deal with the clients, which again, I loved. Yeah. Um, <laughs> See, that's my worst nightmare. I hate that shit. Yeah. You know? And look, it, it's weird. Now. I don't know what's happened, but I'm. Um, I know you're going to laugh, but somewhat of an introvert. Where probably my whole life I've been an extrovert. Yeah, like, you've explained that to me. Yeah, I, and I don't know. I don't know what it was in my life. Um, like someone that, flipped the switch. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Look, I know I went through burnout at where I am now, mm. um, and that was during the trade recruitment thing, just working yeah, stupid hours. Yeah, you trying hit to, the start of COVID. Yep. You know, oh, where it just went psycho and you're still going through that. Yep. But it was like, I've actually had, a, I've got a good mate of mine, Robbie, who's thinking about getting into like supervising yep. and he asked my opinion. Yep. And I said, I, I could not do it myself. Yeah. And he goes, oh, I could sort of pick my own hours as long as I do eight, but it doesn't end at eight, does no, it? No, it, it definitely doesn't. you taking that home with you. But when I first started... Stressful. In in that role as a site start supervisor. Mm. What's that slab? Slab pause. Slab, slab pause. Yeah. So basically I take it from earthworks or surveying earthworks, slab down, um, and then we do all the plumbing, yeah. brick delivery, lintel delivery, frame delivery, and then I'd hand it over to okay. the, the building supervisor. Um, so, yeah, and then I had a, a rather large footprint as well. I was doing from probably Fremantle, um, Forestfield, all the way down to Lake Clifton, we had a oh, we had some fuck. jobs down okay. there. Yeah. Um, so massive footprint of of miles. I was doing some stupid games yeah, as well. I can imagine. Um, but I had a a good boss at the time that turned around to me and said, "I don't care what hours you work, just make sure your work's done." Which most mornings I was honestly pulling out the driveway at four thirty five o'clock yeah, that's in the morning. It. Fucking oath, early. I want to get home early. That, yep. that was that was my life ambition. Just get home early. I, I was home at two o'clock every day. I am know. like that now. Yep. I still oh, am. Absolutely. I'd, I'd go in at three if I could. Yep. On my life, I would. Um, which made it easy for me because when I was checking heights with a laser level at that time Dark. of the morning, you can see the actual laser going Fuck. around. Now, so crazy. Um, you just hold the staff up and you could you could see where your heights were. So, um, but from, I suppose that point. Then I moved into the office. Mm. I actually... Yeah, I want um, to know about this transition. I haven't asked you properly well, about that. You I, know, While I was How, still doing oh, slabs, yep. I got the chance to build... I ended up building two houses from... Literally from mm -hmm. go to work. Um, so I pulled the slabs from and then continued on yeah. and, and finished them to handover. So 
Um, Fuck. Put you in the deep end straight away. It, look, um, oh, look, I was probably thrown in the deep end as a site start supervisor. Mm. I remember a couple of days in, I didn't realise that the guy I'd been paired with was getting the axe. Um, <laughs> oh, no. How and then, would... I don't know. Like, oh, no, it was probably a couple of weeks. So say two weeks in, and then all of a sudden, the guy that I, I was working with comes back into the boardroom and goes, uh, I'll catch you later, guys. And everyone said, yep, see you later. I said, what's that all about? And he said, oh, he's been finished up. And it's like, oh, shit, okay. You're on your own now. And then... No more training period. The the boss at the time um, brought in a wrap present and said, um, congratulations in front of all the boys and gave it to me. And it was a snorkel set, basically saying sink or swim. Oh, fuck, you know? interesting. So, um, Some sick joke. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I had a great... Um, great team of guys that were around me um yeah good and i find a lot of that with a lot of a lot of um building companies yeah it's it's a team they will help each other out with problems and shit like that oh, you remember I, you telling absolutely. me absolutely like if if i didn't understand something i'd give ray a call kendall a call yep. probably not rob mabbit um <laughs> i'll make sure he watches this so he, he knows uh, he used to call me to do his brick measures but um <laughs> and and brian as well um you know You'd call them and they'd they'd be there in two seconds. Like I'd often ring Brian and say, "Brian, no, I, I just can't get my head around this." To the point where I I think I, I said to Dave and, and Brian, I don't know, probably a month in, saying I've made the worst decision of my life. I don't understand this job. I, I, yeah. And they said, "Mate, keep at it. You're doing a great job." And all the boys were saying the same thing. Like they were saying, "You're doing such a good mm. job, man. I, I think you've been too hard on yourself." Um, but it was just a struggle and every night I was up to like nine o'clock at night doing doing my job just so I could yep. like keep up to speed with everyone yeah. else. Um, and I remember Brian saying, mate, it would be like a light switch going off you. It'll just, it'll click one day. Mm. And sure enough, it did. It, it really did, did yeah, 100%. Um, to the point where I used to write down every single date in a diary, but by the end of it, or when that that switch did flick, I could do it all in my head. And yeah. Bang, 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 bang. Um, but, and mate, there, there's people in the industry as well. And um, one guy I will always put up there, um, oh, I'm sure he won't mind me saying, but Mitch Nizic from NLG Sand Supplies. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the nicest people, or, no, probably, probably the nicest person I've met in the industry. Just a, a book of knowledge on everything. He could tell me, He'd be sitting in his office in Kelmscott or wherever it was, and I'd say, "Mitch, what's what's the dirt like under this rock in Mount Nazura?" And he could give me. I think he's a fully blown a geologist or something yeah, like that as yeah. well. Um, but help me through. Like, just yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough about him. He's just a really really nice guy who um, I still speak to now. Like, yeah, he's, um, bit of a mentor. Yeah, in the- like he's somewhat semi retired now, but um, still keeps in contact. Um, mm. Just a great guy and, and known through the whole industry by everyone else Fuck. to be that great guy well, he's done work for dad and, and stuff like oh, that oh has as well. he really yeah oh yeah. what a fucking champion um most stressful years then at all or just maybe a, that look, short period until it did look at, click yeah at that time i thought it was the most stressful thing and i thought nah go back to what you know which was cars at that time yeah um but yeah, what made you stick what made you stick with it Especially because you had a good setup there at Mercedes, eh? Yeah, absolutely. No, and look, I, again, I loved Mercedes. I had a, a great mentor there, um, being Jason um, Mooney. Um, oh, right. Yeah, I know yeah. that name. Yep. I, I used to refer to him as the um, the firefighter because everything that our bigger boss would um, give us, Jason, um, would go back to Jason Mooney. He'd go and put all the fires in. Yeah, out gotcha. Good. And I often said to him, I want to be you. Like, I want to be that firefighting person that goes Fuck. and fixes everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I got moved around at Mercedes. I ended up as a um, service uh, manager. Uh, no, no, not at not at Mercedes. So I was, I was service manager at um, Honda. Um, but yeah, started off as an LCV um, service advisor. Then I got moved over to passenger cars. Yeah. So you've gone from dealing with Australia Post, uh, post workers and ambulance drivers and stuff like that. It's good, mm. mate. How are you going? To moving over into the yeah. prestige where people are paying up to half a million dollars for a car. Fuck. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three yeah. days full, sir. 
Um, do you go through training like that? How to deal with people? Yeah, and look, that's probably do that, they? one of the best companies I've worked for. Um, for their training their staff. Training their staff. Like we used to get flown to Melbourne, which is awesome. Fucking hell. Yep. Yeah. Um, and do all the training there and, and all that. But I remember the first time that I started over in uh, passenger cars, I opened the door and my boss at the time, Ruben, oh, this guy walked through and I said, oh, morning mate or something like that. And he walked past and then right. uh, Ruben come up and he said, no, no, it's sir, madam. Yeah. Um, which I learnt, learnt really quick as well. But um, enjoyed, again, you know, talking to people yeah. and, and um, being, I suppose, personable somewhat. Um, yeah, loved it there. And then I suppose I had that conversation with my boss at the time and saying, you know, I want to I want to know everything about the business like you do. Mm. And then I got moved over to um, the panel and paint shop that we used to have, Western Auto Body. I remember you sorting me out. Remember I had that guy reverse into me in the dunes? Yeah. And you ca- I, you, um, <laughs> it's a fucking good story, actually. Well, not that good, but yeah. um, remember I, you sorted out my car because he fucking come in the front of my car and needed a new bonnet, new... Front, oh, front wow. right yeah, corner. No, so you're, you're yeah, yeah. Yeah, dropped it in the U, stuff. and I had a Mercedes for the week. Oh, did you? Yeah, Jeez. man, that, that was a <coughs> fucking eye opener. Yeah, going from a seventy six into that. I remember at, after work, like washing myself down, taking my boots off, and that. You're like, no, nah, don't fucking worry about it. And it's amazing. I never said that. Um, Paddle shift all the way home. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, look, and yeah. So I, I, well, I got moved over there as a. Um, I think it was an estimator at the time. Mm-hmm. I had never done estimating in my fucking life. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and my boss there, Matt Sapanis, um, he, he had to teach me everything because I had no. I've never done anything like that. So a car would come in, I'd have to basically assess it and quote it oh, fuck. for what needed okay. to be done. Um, and I remember really early on, me and Matt had a run in. Like, I think he expected a bit more from me, oh, and I think it was only a couple of weeks in. I missed something off the quote. And he lost his marbles and then, yeah, I kind of bit back at that that time of my life and um, had it out with him. But um, And then I got moved back as a, um, oh, I think it was a business, a business management uh, role or something like that. So I looked after all the fleet, um, fleet companies. Fuck, I wonder what the idea <clears throat> was with moving you around so much. Were they trying to teach you? Probably trying to get rid of me, to be honest. <laughs> Um, no, probably look, trying I, to train you up in each area. You know, I, I'd like to think that's what it was. Yeah, because again, I had that conversation with Jason, saying, you know, I want to know. Yeah, that's it. Not just servicing. I want to know everything. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Um. So, yeah, I forgot what it was called. Uh, a business, um, a business manager. But Ooh. yeah, look, looked after all the fleet companies. So fleet care. Um. They'd, they'd ring up for a quote on a car and would give fleet pricing and stuff like that. Plus, I suppose, trying to refine the sales process somewhat. So, follow down lost leads. Um, oh, fuck. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, look, that was that was really... Has that helped a lot now for the role that you're in? Um, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Like, like, especially with the trade recruitment that I've done. It was mm. following up trades and, and stuff like that. But... Um, Again, I'm pretty lucky with all the places that I work, except for when I was working with you and Dad. They've all been nice people. <laughs> um, but Mercedes, I had great people around me as well. Um, yeah, it just it made the job easier. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I am. I'm very lucky. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, um, business development manager. That's what. That's it. Yeah, that's what. I'm um, so yeah, you know, we tried to implement new things where I'd book test drives with guys that were on, on the edge of buying, and it didn't always work. Um, but yeah, some some was a rush when it did. Oh, absolutely, hundred yeah, percent. And dopamine hit. Like, oh, yes, let's go. My, uh, I suppose my report at the time was Yarn. Um, I used to go go to him and say, "I've been chasing this, chasing this. Um, can we do it at this price?" No, <laughs> go away, come back. Fucking Wolf of Wall Street, that yeah, type well, of shit. But, I suppose everyone I've ever spoken to, they always straight away assume that I'm in sales. Oh, mm-hmm. do, you, do you sell um, cars at um, Mercedes? I'm like, no. Mm. I've, I've never, I don't know, I look at it as a risk take that I've got to sell a certain amount of cars to pay my mortgage. Yeah. I've got to sell a certain amount of houses. Mm-hmm. So I've kind of steered away from that. I prefer the traditional pay packet every 
week, yeah, fortnight, yeah, month, yeah. whatever it is. Something um, more safe. Yeah, absolutely. And do you reckon, <clears throat> fuck man, not being a dick, because I, I hope for it sometimes a lot, especially in winter. Do you think that's stemmed from Brick Lane? Like knowing, you know how the, the wet months are tough, dude. Yeah. You know where you get fucking two weeks, you can't do a day sometimes. Um, yeah, possibly. Um, I, I think it's come from back in the day where you, you, I'd basically get paid. And you spend your wages yeah. every every mm-hmm. week. Like week you live in pay to pay. Yeah. Um, Whereas now you like that fucking safety of knowing. Yep, yeah, this is what one hundred percent. This is what's coming this is what, into the and account. And then I can budget. I can exactly plan stuff yeah. um, without thinking. Oh shit! I've got to sell or, or do yeah. whatever I've got yeah. to do to get that money. Yeah. Um, does it but, does it affect your drive? I, I look. I don't think so. No. Um, to the point where my boss, Jason, I said, I'd prefer to be on higher dollars because I'm going to work for you as hard as I can. Yeah. There's no mm. money incentive that's ever going to make me work harder. Like, oh, shit, I've got to do that to get that yeah. next next yeah. level. I was always trying to get that next level anyway. It was never, money was never a driver for me. Mm, it was more, I don't know, my my work ethic. Wanted to climb. You yeah, to absolutely. Climb up, and learn everything. I know probably at Mercedes because... I got the interview through a friend of a friend that I always had the persona that everyone around me knows that I got this job because I know the big boss. Yeah. So I was, I suppose I put that yourself. pressure, or pressure yeah. on myself yeah. to also think, well, I've got to prove myself. Mm, yeah. Um, where I'd like to think that anyone that would got That's asked the question, point. what was yeah, he like? Fucking oath. Yeah, he, he pulled his weight kind of thing, so... Yeah, because um, it was different, dude, wasn't it? It was different to bricklaying wages and all that type of thing in trading. You, you, like, especially... I always thought to myself the toughest part about adjusting to that life would be you can't leave once your work's done. It's like, okay, it's 2 o'clock, you've probably got all your work done, but it's like, no, 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 you're contracted till 5 or... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I thought that might have been... That was my thoughts at the time when you did change. Well, look, that again, adjustment. when I was on the ground... Um, I was told you do your job. You can go home. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, you can go gotcha. home at ten o'clock if you want. But as long as all your works, yeah. don't don't make there be a phone call. Or don't let there be a phone call saying why why wasn't this done this, today? Yeah, gotcha. Because I know you've gone home early. So yeah, why wasn't it done? Um, but when I first started in the office of where I am now, I there was no start at eight, finish at four, no nine to fives. It was until you finished. Like, yeah. there'd be nights that... Eight to eight. <laughs> my boss would be telling me to go home. Like, yeah. Chris, let's go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we'd be there at eight, eight o'clock at night doing stuff. Like, yeah. It's it's what the job dictates, I suppose. And again, I was never one to shy away. Yeah. From putting the extra hours. No, no. Nah, again, with the, with the mindset of, I want to climb the ranks. So. Just makes you think, hey, honestly, mate, you know how you were saying before, how you used to sit down at the end of the bed... When you when you enjoy your job to a certain extent, yep. Do hours fucking matter? Um, so is there enough hours in the day? Now? Like, do you enjoy your job now? It's a hard one. Um, Drop that one on you. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, it's it's a very stressful job. It, my stress levels, if I'm honest, are starting to to come off a little bit with, I suppose, the segment of work that I've been given. At work, mm. um, I've nearly finished my pipeline of stuff to the point where I feel lazy at the moment. Where compared I, to what you were at, oh, 100%. At, yeah, to the but point where I fucking rest. <laughs> had a conversation with my boss, and he said, That's because you're used to doing a million mm. things at once. Mm. And then in the same breath, he said, Enjoy the, the quiet time. Yeah, but I, I know I, I'm, I think I'm mentally ready to go again. Um, gotcha. Wow. I think I was definitely burnt out last year. Um, like running running on fumes. Had a good holiday. You know, the, the business shut down for two weeks and there is no one contacting you, mm. which has been the first time in, in years. Um, and then I tagged an extra week on where I got yeah, very minimal know. emails, which I just punch away for 10 minutes a day kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, just so I didn't have a, a full inbox when I got home, uh, when I started back at work. But... Um, yeah, because yeah, I'm trying to convey how how stressful your job. Like I'm how, like you've worked your way up a hundred percent. Fucking 
done really fucking awesome, but it does come with a, you know, uh, that, yeah, oh, I'm trying to, I, without saying what it is, I'm trying yeah, to I'm say, not. um, and, you and know, not it's a big that, fucking, not that I tactic. don't want you to say what it is, but I know there's a lot of stigma <laughs> oh, that, you know, yeah, it, it can get hard. a bit personal. And, no, and I understand that, man. I do. 100% I probably do. Probably out of the three people that you're going to have listen to this podcast. Um, <laughs> and not because it's you, it's because it's me. No, no but fuck no. I, guarantee, I could almost guarantee that there would be someone building a house through us that watches your channel. Oh, honestly. It's yeah. just the, 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 burn, the burn that I've done to, to recruit the bricklayers oh, and the dude, trades I've that we've seen done. it we used to ring you and I, I oh honestly I could it was, see it so badly but at the time I loved it because I was busy and you know get shit going back to my boss saying yeah. yeah got this got this got this got this um, he set me a little little target of you know the first 10 bricklayers you get on you know it was just yeah joyous times you know we started at something like 80 82 bricklaying teams and I think at our peak we had 286 teams Fucking working hell. for us that's so much it's, it's a, a and again, I, I do. I feel so sorry for the people that are out there having to wait for their houses. But it is a massive beast that mm. I work for. Yeah. Um, you know, at the moment I've got um, metal roofing. Or, yeah, roof covers that report through to me. Yeah. Basically, we're doing over three hundred roof covers a month. That's fucking wild. You know, 300 at, homes. Well, there's, you know, building companies in Perth that don't even sell that many houses in a whole year, and we're doing it per month. It just shows yeah. you the um, the shortage as well. Oh, the, the pay, mountain you're going to climb. It, it was a perfect storm, though. It was COVID. Low interest rates. Low interest rates. Like, no one was buying houses, so yeah. the government thought, okay, without... Look, I don't want to get all political, but without consulting anyone in the building industry, let's do double stimulus overnight. Yeah while we're at our all-time low with labor and and stuff like that mm. brickies oh. had sold their trailers and and cement mixes and gone up to the mines yeah and then all of a sudden you want to spruik the the economy and the mm-hmm. building sector with what labor like, oh, honestly man. what labor oh and then covid and then you lock the borders and again i'm not I'm, no no i understand I'm, you can't have a fucking uh, uh, like i think um mcgowan done a much to a few people's um disagreements but i think he done a good job through covid i thought he did i oh, thought he did absolutely yeah. mate me and my family are still here <clears> hey <throat> fucking oath dude same you know, e- exactly I, mate well as you know i only got covid november last year yeah fucking I, I hell how you got um covid dodged it man time. yeah that that sort of rolls perfectly into what i was wanted to ask you a lot because i i, I, I witnessed it your whole journey we used to speak to you a lot and you know especially since you stopped brick like, like working with us you know we'd ring you <laughs> on smoko when yeah. you're the busiest too and i did absolutely notice uh times uh where you were struggling and then i also noticed times where you had clicked on where you're like yeah no nah, fucking got it sorted yeah it was funny now that i think back to that but um like what 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 is the difference between the life you have now and the life back then do you know what I mean? Like, we're obviously, doing a more labour-intensive job like fucking bricklaying, or you know, there's much. You would know this too. Much less stress. Just yeah. have to rock up, yep. do a bit of time management, get your and physically do your work, yep. and then off you go. What, what what's you know like? What's the handover like? Um, what would you rather? Would you rather rather less stress? Like, because I'm finding out a bit more that you're you're. You, you you fucking thrive a little bit under pressure. Would you say that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, look, I know I, it's a fucking hard well, question like to answer. I, said to you, I think I'm ready to take on stress again. But not, wow. Or like probably. Not. That's only after three weeks off. <laughs> no. It, exactly. Like I think with a few people in our business, it was probably the the battery charge we needed. Um. And again, it's just we want to finish these Pump houses as well. Yeah, of course. Um, but, but how are your stress levels today? That's that's basically what I wanted to say. Look, uh, you know, a, after the whole ride, a lot lot more manageable. But again, I'm ready to take on more. Like I've proposed something to my boss at work that I want to start doing at work, um, which will 
no doubt entail more stress, but it's it's a bugbear with us at the moment um, at where I work. Um, so again, I I love taking things head on. So it's I can see there's a challenge there. So mm-hmm. I want to I want to go in Snap and try and fix it. Like help help everyone try yeah. and fix it and get through it. What do you feel like personally though when you know that it's a huge fucking mountain? Like exactly the position you're in. Like one oh, the, one of the, the other time. analogy I suppose is like you know. Um, eating an elephant just one bite at a time like yeah i don't know i just knuckle down and then bang put the blinders on and yeah yeah right gotcha. um like someone will, there was another position that i'd done where honestly i suppose the only word in my vocabulary was yep and yeah can you do this yep can you do this yep can you do this yep piling it on yeah, yeah. and but i, I loved it because okay what's the issue there yep okay call call that person yeah ask that and do this and do that bang put yeah to bed bit of delegating you know yeah. and, and yeah. being not taking it on yourself but uh delegating it to the person who who will do it better yeah, than you absolutely and and understanding but, that but never delegating something to someone that i would never ever do anyway you know it was but well, yeah, okay yeah, you don't want to ring that per- give, give me what's yeah. the number i'll call that person yeah. i don't care yeah gotcha um i suppose one of my biggest things now that i sing to all the um or most of the people that work under me is communication is key oh, fuck. and look i learned in that the building industry oh, 100 percent. but I, even in life like i, I learned that from a young yeah. age as well like some of the stupid stuff i used to do like got myself in a credit card debt and then wouldn't return numbers yeah. of people trying to chase their money yeah yep and then get a knock on the door by a bailiff and when it's too late yeah exactly and mm-hmm. that's probably one thing that my man dad instilled in me was don't run away from your problems. Like face them. Yeah. Like hit them face on. But and like you say, communication <clears throat> is a big thing. Absolutely. Like, in, like yep. answering the phone, talking to people. A, a lot of people off if you don't. <laughs> a lot of people struggle. Like they still do these days. They prefer to send an SMS or an email or something yeah. like that. I'm, I'm still a firm believer of picking up the phone and, and speaking to someone. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I'm I'm a lot like that, but not at work, which is weird. Yeah, you know, because usually supervisors are ringing, but I need to. Can't yeah. do it all by fucking text. No, but. exactly. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm ready to take on another portion of work. Well, what do you? Well, that works perfectly. What do you do? <laughs> this is rolls on a bit now. Actually, what do you do to uh, is it alleviate the stress or to minimise it? And what outlets do you have? Do you have like fucking sh- strategies at all? Or no, nah, I. Oh, ice paths or fucking <laughs> no, breathing it's, exercises. It's funny you say that. Um, have you heard of that Gary Brecker? I have heard of Gary yeah, Brecker. Yeah, he's got a podcast, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's massive, and uh, Dana White's associated with him. Yeah, and, uh, Joe Rogan and all yeah, that. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and they talk about the um, the health benefits from a an ice oh, bath fuck and stuff. Yeah. Um, obviously, I don't have an ice bath, but um, what that Gary Brecker says, you can get the same sort of. Um, reaction or, or um benefit <laughs> from having a shower in the morning then you know washing yourself and all that step out of the shower out of the stream of water turn it all the way to cold let it get cold and then walk straight back into that and yep. try and have a minute and he said you're going to probably breathe like <laughs> yeah deal with it yeah just and then try and control your breathing. That like, during winter <clears throat> would absolutely be the same effect. Well, Whereas now, honestly, on an co- Arvo light now, I can just go fucking straight on the cold. Ah, correct. Like, That's I, I spoke to literally someone today about it, uh, another guy in the industry, and I said my cold water tap isn't that cold. Yeah. But what I've started doing now is as soon as I'm ready for a shower in the morning, I go stand in the shower, then put it to cold, turn it straight on. That would be a shock no matter what. Well, it catches your... The, the cold water from the night yep. overnight and, and it is yeah, a lot colder though. and it's funny oh, fuck hey yeah. i didn't think of that Good and i'll keep it on cold and then you feel the water actually get warmer yeah okay. so it could be your body climatizing to it a little bit as well but on the lower um, back it's fucked when it comes over you oh, apparently yeah. meant to do your face and your chest but then not you, you turn I do, around and then, on your back yeah. you're fucked yeah that pool man during winter is like an ice bath it's fucking oh, it's well, so exhilarating as though. you know Obviously, I've lived down yeah, the, yeah. the road at one stage. <laughs> it's Literally. like I'm following your... <laughs> yeah, we'll have you, um, have you out our way soon. Yeah. Um, but it, that yeah. was a concrete pool. That was that was oh. freezing. Even in the middle of summer, that was cold to jump into. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, which I used you knew to about love back then. I used to love it. So. Yeah. Um, Do you miss having a pool? 
<clears throat> I do. Yeah. You do? Yeah. And it's funny, we went over a friend's house um, two weeks ago and had a pool. And again, I've, I've still got ADD um, traits, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Thinking where you can put one in. Oh, straight away. Got home. I'm looking at prices of pools yeah. that afternoon. Yeah. It's, um, but Bella's a water baby. So. Yeah. Yeah. She so it's, and she's does. at the perfect fucking age yep. where you'll, she'll enjoy it for 10, 15 years Yeah, now. absolutely. Um, are, you, are you actually thinking about it? Oh, really? It's a fucking good process, actually. Ours was putting it in and that. It was a fun process. <clears throat> only because the only place I could put it at the moment is where I've just put the artificial lawn. Yeah. Which I'm um, <laughs> not ready to fucking waste that. Did yet. I ever tell you? That I put the artificial <laughs> lawn in. I had a guy that was mowing my lawns and doing my gardens, and I forgot to send him a message. And then he sent me a message saying, no, "Hey, come to mow your lawn tomorrow." <laughs> uh, and then. I said, oh, Steve, sorry, I forgot to tell you. I'll put this down, send him photos. He lost his shit. Yeah, I was going to say, you dog, why'd you do that? But no, he was a massive greenie, like saying, oh, oh you, know, wow. that, you know, that shit doesn't break down and takes 15 years to break down and oh, you're going to kill okay. dolphins and Chill whales. Out, and it's like, really? Oh, no, I'm just, I'm happy that I, my kids played on normal lawn. And Oh, that's okay. a bit don't, Yeah, don't, don't Like, I do agree, thing. you know, I, I love a fucking lawn. I yeah. love a, a nice lawn, but fuck, especially how... You know, I'm surprised you didn't keep your lawn. I actually am. Um, because you've fucking always been huge on entertaining. Yeah. That's what, and, 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 you know, again, we're going on a tangent, but no, I'm no. going to stick with this one because you're missing that a bit at the new house. Yeah. I fucking love your house. It's a beautiful house, but you need to set it up the way that you always set your places <laughs> up, dude. But, Outdoor Barbie, let's fucking but I've got all it. that. Yeah, I know. I've but is it. it what you, like Jane Brook, where you, your previous house that was fucking dream Pe- probably the, beautiful wasn't it mate oh it was absolutely like that outdoor entertaining area yeah. was just yep yeah I've never seen oh no uh, Brad, Brad's house was the same Brad's I mean, fucking just yeah him, me um, uh, him and Steve and Daz helped me do it um, I think the difference is I've got a baby now or I've got a child yeah uh, and that takes your time yeah absolutely um, but you're getting to the point now where you, you do you think you're getting a bit of time back now though yeah absolutely I've noticed that because you're starting to do that shit again yeah and you know, you know not so much entertaining you like, fucking shit. animal <laughs> every weekend <laughs> fake lord we used to have something at I know like, I now, yep, yep come over for a feed or I, I was never really one to go out to Northbridge I, I've done my time in Northbridge mm. and shit like that but I, I'd prefer to entertain have people over then go pizzas, out all yeah, that yeah shit all that kind of together, stuff and, yeah. and, and that's what it always was like barbecue you know smoked food and yeah smoked meats it was and stuff fucking like that. great <clears throat> that's but, where Cook um, and Grill and Chillin was born we'll get back to that it was yeah yeah, yeah but um, yeah I suppose the outlet at the moment for stress would be somewhat the the jet ski and stuff like yeah. that. What one thing and I reckon I, before that you were missing that, but your outlet was um, Bella. Yep, yeah, family. absolutely. So you know, family yeah, before Bella, it was probably entertaining and, and being a twit, and then um, Bella came and still, mate. My life is Light, Bella. Yeah. Like, I just she's fucking again. Beautiful. I know. Oh, she is. She's just. I can have the shittiest day at work. Exactly, and. I just come home and it all melts yeah. away, you know. I just look at her and I do. And I could tell that. I can honestly tell that when we FaceTime you. Like, you know, I knew... I, I remember there'd be days where we'd FaceTime you when you were with Bella mm. and me and Dad. And then it'd be... I'd actually notice it in yeah. your eye, like glowing. Yeah. Like, and and yeah. she is. She's a character. Oh, though, and just like you and Marie, I'm you know? so proud of her, what, what she's what she, been through. Yeah, which, fuck, dude. She probably... Don't, oh, I don't even think she realizes. Well, she wouldn't know. No, what I she's know, been man. It's a normal yeah. thing for her. Yeah, and so that, I'd, I'd like to talk about that yeah. shortly. Yeah, but, we will. Yeah. Um, I'll, 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 let me jump on to two things that I, I needed to mention in this. So, okay. tell just tell me straight up if you haven't got an answer for this one because this is the one that you struggled with. What's the one thing I don't know about you as a brother? I think I've I've learned a heap. Like just tonight, just about like Lukey and all that fucking. Yeah. Do you oh, want to no, come back sh- to it, mate? Phone a friend? No, not really. Um, <laughs> it's a hard one, like, isn't it, mate? I, sh- I share you, most. You tell of me most of the shit, yeah. don't you? Yeah. All right. Next one is I wanted to talk about like um, 
fishing you the, so fucking random dude mm-hmm. fish and chip hunters oh okay i thought you were gonna say fishing now i said yeah. no, i'm not a fisherman so instead of me explaining you'll be you'll be way better so guys i want you to listen it's fucking so out of left field oh yeah but it it's, is i love it so much man and, and it was just what pete's talking about is i created a page called perth's fish and chip hunters <laughs> And uh, I won't make a secret of it. it. It was riding on the the coattails and the ideas of Perth Burger Hunters. Oh right, oh yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. Like that's just a massive thing. But obviously, that was for burgers. Um, when I lived around here, we yep. had Chips R Us in Midland. Um, that to this day, I still think is the best fish and chips. Yeah, in you've Perth. just morphed into fucking Dave Portnoy, the pizza guy. One 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 <laughs> by um, You all know the rules. I thought you were going to say Owen. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't. Um, then we moved to where I live now, and the first thing, I think it was probably one of our first meals because you're unpacking fish chi- everything. Yeah, fish and chips. What's easy? Go. Fish and chips. And we went and got it, and it was garbage, absolute garbage. Um, they brew the idea of what's a good fish and chip shop around yeah, here like, yeah. there was no Perth fish and chip hunters and, and I just and, did not realise how many people are so fucking passionate I, about it I, I love it like, it's such a good page man yeah, it's so abs- positive some fucking good shit goes oh, on there's absolutely. some arguments yeah there is people there get is. fucking very um, there are some probably overly passionate people on there <laughs> about their fish and chips <laughs> they number their reviews it's fucking brilliant yeah. Um, Review number 171. So anyone out there, yeah, jump on and give it a look. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to, I've, I've come up with this idea, guys, whether you're watching or listening, that I, I, I don't know, but I'd love to wear it, like a hat yeah. or a hoodie. Remember the old... I've talked to you about oh, this. Dog. Yeah. Remember the old um, chip boxes where it looked like... Oh, can you help me... Like the red red yeah, hot chips or red whatever red hot it chips and yeah. then black... Pay, uh, yeah, it was like newspaper, like newspaper writing in yeah. the background. Yeah, imagine that plastered all over. A yeah, hoodie. like a bucket of chips. The, yeah, um, that's yeah, it. Bu- yeah, yeah. Um, some fucking good ideas to be done. And do you know what I reckon? Do a Dave Portnoy. Oh, thing. The, the, look, there is Fuck, yeah, there good. is plans to do that. Tear it open. Um, absolutely. <laughs> like, but to be honest, I don't think I've probably apart from like um, your Kalis and Cicerellos, I don't think I've ever ate fish and chips straight out of. No, like no, it needs to be doorway, unfolded, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Um, it's always driven home, and you're not probably She's getting the best nice product you can. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's definitely I've got to got to get back into the um, mm. the extrovert side yeah, of me. Fucking out there. Come I'll come do it. I'll come do it yeah. with you, mate. It'd be mint. That's probably what I need. Just a bit of bit of confidence in doing it. But um, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> definitely something to do. It is. Um, but yeah, I mean, how many fucking uh, members is there now? Six thousand, um, seven thousand? No, eight point seven, eight point seven thousand or something. Yeah. And the good thing I love about that page, I'm glad we've spoken about this. It's like when someone is legitimately in a country town or in, like, for example, so, a, a tourist, you know, might be down in Margaret River. Yeah, and, and they're traveling from somewhere, somewhere and they're like, oh, yeah. genuinely ask yep. a question. What's good fish and chips for anything? You have fucking nine locals jump the on. The community, go, this one here is amazing. Yeah. Like, honestly, they Put all get photos behind up. It. It's fucking there's, awesome. There's a new, um, probably top provider or whatever they, a, con- a top contributor on there. Badge, um, yeah, the badge thing. Yeah, I, I won't mention names, but yeah. um, she she actually does video reviews and stuff. I, I'm oh, just honestly, love it, dude. I sit back and I'm just stoked. Look, <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know, like I'd, I'd jump on there. How long ago was this? It was like fucking oh, not even two years. Yeah, not even two it's years. It's bugger yeah. all. Um, I basically try and follow every fish and chip page there is in Perth. Yeah. And then as soon as they do a post, I upload it to ours. Yeah, I saw that. I'm well, loving that lately, actually, with the reels. Yeah, my thought process on that was if you're sitting at home thinking, oh, what do I want for dinner? And then <laughs> I'm... I'm it's oh, fucked me a lot of times, I eh, oh, where I see a post up there. I'm like, oh, chips are us. Let's I'm weird chips are us. with... I'll, I'll spend money stupidly sometimes, but then stuff yeah, like I want to that. Talk about that. Like too. if there's a your fucking bread habit, that's weird. No, there's no. Oh, you, you, <laughs> you're going to get shot down when you do that. But anyway, you, you, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you would jump on there, and I'd see a deal like fish and chip, like straight away. If there's a deal to be had, fucking. I, I want to go there, like just to get a deal. Like, yeah. There's two cheeseburgers for. $3, yep. I'm going there. But especially care. on a Friday night, you're like, fucking, ooh, what are we going to have? Oh, it's that, like your night. But 
I, well, I mean, you know this. Yeah. It, it come from family tradition as well. Friday Every night, Friday night was fish and chip night. Fish and chips, yeah. yeah. Um, where if you misbehave for the week, you're getting Fuck off. overboiled um, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, and that's it. Shit that we used to throw when mum and dad weren't looking. Um, but <laughs> Into that canister. Yeah, the green oil <laughs> canister. Yeah. And then Dad hosed it out one day and it was about 45 moulded... Yeah, all my peanut oh, fucking geez. sandwiches, peanut butter sandwiches from school I used to drop in there. But, you know, everyone's got a story. Like, with fish and chips, it's always relatable. It's, You're fucking so right, mate. Yeah. And do you know what? Who one of the biggest guys is? Dad. Yeah. Dad fucking is so active on there. Mm. Oh, I'm surprised he hasn't posted anything from over in Europe where I he's fucking... I thought he did. I think he... Yeah, did I think he, he really? done a post, yeah. Fuck it now. Um, oh, good. But... Yeah, guys, get on there. You'll love it, Yeah, hey? honestly, it's, it's just a, a clean community, um, passionate people that, you know, it's all about fish and chips. Oh, yeah, and the one thing I do like is a lot of business owners on there will mm. jump on and just say, hey, I'm not here to advertise. Yeah. This is so- something we've got on tonight. Yep. It, well, they are, but, you know, yep. they're not dicks. No. Nah, no one's nah. dickheads and, and about look, it. To be honest, to be totally transparent, when I first started the page, I was messaging, DM, DMing the fish and chip shops. Saying, <laughs> can I have oh, a free oh I wish anyone out there that wants to offer me a free free fish and chips I'm up for it oh definitely. how but, good um, my intention out of all of it was to promote local businesses because yeah. a lot of mum and dads like the the one that we moved close to and I ended up finding that was half good and then I unfortunately Which found out that, that they sold Sterling Central uh, fish and chips is that the one we went to last time we were at yours yep. it's like a newer building yeah, yeah, and it's at the bottom of the shopping centre. Yeah, it was. Yep. Oh fuck! Spewing. So yeah, she. I, I didn't realise that she'd sold up. Um, but her fish and chips was really nice. Not, Beautiful yeah. chips weren't the same as like the twice cooked ones at um, at Chips R Us. <clears throat> but um, fuck off! Are they twice cooked? I'm sure they are. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure they parboil them. Uh, not parboil. Par fry them first like yep. in a 80 degree and throw them in the fucking freezer no to dry them out. I'm, i don't know I, I thought they throw them back into the the chip thing that they scoop out of mm. Jeez, people the people listen to this shit fuck, gonna go Oi, fuck i'm telling you right now this, this is where it'll peak extreme. because i'm super excited really? talking about it all right i'm just getting hungry now and i wish we ordered bloody <laughs> and now I'm thinking well, you about, can get chips are us on the way home no, now actually that's a good point fucking oh and then i'm thinking center point pizza's here yeah. i don't have a good pizza joint around me well, anymore center point's a goal but anyway um <clears throat> yeah and then i think when you order it then they put it in again so at a higher temp that's clever I think. keeps it fucking fresh so, as because there'd be some times that I'd go in there I think they'd sold out of chips that they'd mm. hand cut as well I fucking never had chips that taste like that oh, whether it's the oil I don't know yeah. what it is and they taste not, great cold they're that's not super know, a crispy good chip. or no they're um, not eh? no it's which, fucking very interesting you know, isn't, what is your favourite by the way as being the, the starter of that page what's your best fish and chips that you've had I'll, I'll be honest it's still still chips are us I've just is. found another local one near us um Lincoln Fish and Chips mm. in Morley. Um, they're good. The, the batter's not extreme. It's just a nice light. You know, next time you come over, we'll, you we'll need to fucking it. do videos. You really do. <clears throat> um, it'd be fucking good. It'd be a good laugh, eh? Yeah. Look, I, I know we'll get into it in a sec, but yeah, I just got to find a. Uh, yeah, look, I've got the time now, I suppose. But no, like you're saying, m- more, uh, other outlets as well. Is yeah, we say. Um, no, more probably touching on the cook and grill and chilling. Yeah. Just, and look, I, I listen to your, well, most of your podcasts and, you know, you talk about the, um, no, I do. No. Nothing better to do. No, I meant um, you, you don't. You should listen to everyone. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> only because we started talking about one. I thought, oh, shit, I haven't heard that one. But um, the grind, like, honestly, I only put four videos up. One of them I edited myself. Mm. You've done the other three. Mm. I just I don't know how you guys do it. The the content creators, the Mister Beast and that. Look, they've done it all at one stage. Ah, oh, fucking oath, dude. Yeah, now they're getting people to do it for them. But I, I don't know how you guys do it. Like it's just don't no. Know. But it, it, do you know what? Like I think I'm very lucky. Not like think about it, Chris. You know me more than anyone. Mm. Brick Lane. Like at the moment, and especially in the last couple of years. Oh, would you? Yeah, last couple of years, hundred percent. There's good money to be earned. Yep. I haven't wanted to earn more. Yep. I just want to stay on what I'm earning. I know what I need. Yep. And I can fucking smash time into this. Yeah. No. It's like I get a lot of shit from Jared and shit like that. Like, oh, fucking half days. Yeah, yeah. Don't, no worries. But, <clears throat> and 
yeah, they're right. I'm not doing physical work once I've knocked off. I'm fucking on a computer chilling out. But fuck, I love it. It's no, like, I enjoy it, man. I, I think that's probably that's what the... I'm doing 90% of the time. Um, I love the thought of it. I love the camera angles. I like... Oh, uh, man, I used to love editing your... And I am... I am. I wish I did have more time so I could do it more with you. Because oh, it was look, great. It was something quite special, I feel. And, and probably different to you as well to, compared to what you're doing, but... No, but I'm going to jump into a bit of that this year, actually. Yeah. Um, I know from an early age, like, always about action cameras and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, you like, were. Always you wanted always the cameras and the footage and... <laughs> Oh, no, because um, I was right behind just grabbing the fucking scraps. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, yeah, no, you always did, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, but maybe just a bit more of a creative side. Uh, and probably the ADHD thing as well. No, probably not being able to sit in front of a computer for too long and then I'm yeah. thinking about 10 billion other things. That's um, what you... Yeah, 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 yeah. You need something where uh, you take over a channel that's already big you can go out and fucking film, get everyone else to just edit and shit. Or even like the idea that you had with uh, Field Days, like B's camera bitch, yeah. Oh, fuck, I'd love I've to. I've said to you, I'd, I'd love to come out and just film for you. Like, yeah. You know, I'm all about different angles. Yeah, and, you'd be fucking yeah, mint at it, yeah, actually. Yeah. But perfect timing. Because um, next, I want to talk more about... Oh, damn, I, I really... We're not going to get through all these questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I got really excited then talking about the fucking fish and chip hunters, dude. So Look, in the back good, of my head mate. now, I'm thinking, shit, do I phone or not? I think that I've still got their number in my phone. Fish, fi, uh, chips are on. Yeah. Check while we're on the camera. I need oh. to check this. It's going to be awkward <laughs> if I don't. <laughs> you kill Hang yourself a hunter. Hang on, let me see. <laughs> chips are us. <laughs> really? There you go. Nine two seven four three four two six. Call up now and get your fish and chips. Oh, how good. Oh, mate. I'll check this shit and then we'll come back. Cool. Okay. And we're back again. The cameras are playing ball for now, which is good. I think I've got a setting that I need to fuck around with that. That might work. That's um, so. Yeah. Bloody annoying. Um, how are you going for cameras? You got any secondhand ones? <laughs> <laughs> I can check my stock. Well, I think I went up. I went into the <laughs> attic the other day and I've still got three GoPro 4s. Which yeah. I thought oh, I'd do a sell them and, and try and upgrade. But they all still record 4K. So. And, and the 4s had the best sound. Sound the pickup, best yeah, sound the microphone. Quality. So. You looked at me like I was a piece of shit when you brought those spare batteries. I was like, no, I've got... I'm, I'm an eight, I didn't nine, bring them for you. Now. No, they're brand new. I bought them... Like, oh, online. just then? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, not just then. They arrived in the mail at work today and then I oh. must have put them in my pocket. And Okay. Yeah. What an asshole. Yep. Um, all right, ne- next one... I'll, there's a couple of heavy ones, but I'll, I'll leave one of the heavy ones out because I wanna, I'll, I'll save it for another time. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a lot, you know? Yep. Um, this is actually something I put in and I personally wanted to know as well because speaking to Graham from my crew um, about his IVF journey oh, yep. and how you've been through IVF you, you, yourself as well. Yep. But I've always wanted to know deep down like how, how you, you know, as far as I know, you... you uh, it, you kept a lot to yourself, you know, because it's very, it's a very fucking personal journey and you don't know whether it's going to work yeah, out and stuff yeah. like that. And I, I, I didn't want to know back then because I didn't want to fucking hinder or, yep. um, it was just so fast and I don't know. I, I haven't got an excuse for why I don't know how no. you were feeling at the time. No. Um, like you said, it, it is a personal thing, which, which I'm happy to talk about now, but I suppose at the time, yeah. Um, I, I don't I, like thinking back. I don't even know what I was thinking at the time, but um, yeah, tell, oh, tell me the I whole mean, thing, man. I pro- want to know. Probably to delve into it, it was more of a. So Marie and I'd been trying for a, a baby for I don't know, probably five or six years, mm. um, and then obviously we weren't falling pregnant, and then Marie went and done the tests that she needs to do, um, and everything was fine. So then I went and done my tests. Did it play on your mind? Um, when you found that she was clear, were you like, oh, fuck? Um, or we didn't give a fuck. We just want a baby, you know? No. Oh, look, it's... I don't know. No, no. I think it's a hit to... You can say it isn't, but it, it was a hit probably to my self-esteem that I Absolutely. couldn't be the one... So, yeah, it turned out that I had something wrong with me. Um, 
and we couldn't naturally conceive. So yeah, went down the IVF route. Um, and then or to the point that when it come time to, I suppose, inseminate Marie's... I, 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 I don't know the joke. Edit, yeah, edit, I'm, I'm edit what you want out of this. I don't know how, <laughs> how correct my wording is, but when to inseminate the egg or, or fertilise the egg or whatever they want to call it, I had to obviously produce a sample. Mm. Or no, I had to produce the goods, um, if you like. And when they tested it, there was nothing there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I drove home that day thinking, oh, you beauty, we're good to go. And then I have got a phone call, because I think Marie was going in the next day, saying, um, do you mind coming back down? Because it, we're not getting anything. It's like, okay. Where were um, you in your work life at this point, mate? Jeez, um, uh, supervising? Yep, yeah, yep. Gotcha. Sorry, yep. So it was. Um, so I thought, okay, that's weird. So I went back down there to do the same thing again, um, and they found that I had an issue. So yeah, look, I, I won't go too much into that that part of it. Mm. Um, but it turned out that they had to put me in for like an emergency um, surgery. And See, I fucking... I didn't yeah. know about this, man. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You answered the other question. Look, it's probably not... Um, Something you want to... Do, you know, oh, not, I understand. Not that I'm ashamed of it or anything like that, but... Um, oh, it's not... Like, it's not something you feel... Like, Good about. You no, camera, I understand that, man. It's something wrong with the old fella, you know? Mm. Um, but... Yeah, that, so Marie was still planned to go into that next day. So they pushed her procedure back a little bit. Um, then I had to go under the knife and they took what they needed from the horse's mouth, if mm-hmm. you like, um, and done it that way. So Horse being a little bit fucking generous oh, there, right? Yeah, you, it's definitely not a horse's mouth. <laughs> it's bee's mouth. Jeez, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking something smaller. What are those things that you touch and they curl up into a little ball and... What are they? Earwig. No, not oh, even half. I wish it was. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so, I mean, even that was embarrassing as well, like going under the knife to have that portion of your body. And I remember, like, I'm starting to go under and I don't know whether it was a punked TV show. They had probably the most prettiest looking nurses yeah, in the room at the time. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I'm struggling in that department at the moment. I'm shitting myself about going under the knife, so it's going to be <laughs> shriveled half up the, even more. Yeah, half the, <laughs> half the bloody size it is anyway, you know? Like, But anyway, um, then, cool. So that, that was the first one, and I think, don't quote me on it, Marie had um, eight successful eggs. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and then one, one gets placed with Marie. Um cool go on about our day marie's sometimes the most biggest she's the biggest whinger i know but she did not blink an eyelid i had to give her two or three needles a day and doing that as a husband to your wife knowing in the back of my head that i'm the cause that we've i've got to give my wife needles and she's got to go through all this shit because I was of my shortfallings. Mm. I couldn't do what I needed to do as a man. Um, probably at the time didn't didn't play on my head, but it it's definitely there and it definitely did with everything that's like that I'm probably still going through now in my head. But um, yeah, so she had, oh, I think it was like eight weeks of needles and stuff like that. You know, are they what are they? Are they big hormones? Needles? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Like painful. Um, yeah, yeah. And she didn't batter an eyelid. Honestly, <sighs> didn't complain once. Um, Isn't that amazing? Eh? When you want something, you'll fucking take that. You know oh, what I mean? You're doing it together, and mate, I, I just I can't speak highly enough about her in that situation. Like, how did that I, go? Did it bring you closer together? You know, going through that together, like, um, look, probably to a certain degree, but then. I probably was a little bit reserved without knowing it because of how I was feeling. I I suppose almost subconsciously. Like, I didn't think it was affecting me at the time, but maybe now thinking back, 
Um, like stubborn, like, oh, I don't want to talk about it, you know. Oh, absolutely. Bury, it, yeah. bury your head in the sand kind of thing. <clears> like, um, but, yeah, hands down to Marie. Um, and life went on and, you know, we're, we're waiting for it all to to happen. And I think it was Marie's dad's birthday or something like that. Um, and we were going out for dinner and we'd just been for a test that day or something. And then we're on the way to dinner and we got the phone call saying, um, no, nah, unsuccessful. Oh, fuck. I thought time. that was going the other way. Nah, Damn it. No. Nah. So. Um, you remember that vividly, eh? Yeah. Yep. Yep. We're at the um, greatest Norway bypass when I got that phone call. Um, fuck. That would have been like enough for me to go, oh, let's cancel dinner, dude. Oh, I think I said to Marie, but again, she was a trooper. She said, no, no, we'll go out it's yeah. dad's birthday um so yeah obviously we went to dinner and told them and um, have you got in the back of your brain that you know like there's eight you know eight eggs no nah, not no nah. not at that point <clears throat> nah, it was like fuck i've got to go through all and not oh, even fuck, make dude I've, all the needles after all the needles again how long is that process um i think we had to stop for a while to let all the come out yeah of course whatever medicine i was given marie um via needles i had to i think she had to let that get out of her system for a while um and then we done it again um meanwhile you know costing yeah yeah i wanted that too yeah um and you know not not to it's a bit of a morbid story but um second time you know um we're lucky and it's do you remember? Do you remember where you were then? Um, geez, I feel bad. I don't think I do. Mm, it's funny that, eh? Yeah. Maybe you were fucking in your brain, sort of saying, "No, nah, it's not going to work." Yeah, quite possibly. <clears throat> like expecting the worst, but um, yeah, no, we were we were good. Um, but yeah, it just as a bloke, and I know, I know it's it is a bit of a you know, like fucking. A stigma or if you like but yeah like it's not a nice thing to have to do to your wife because of your short fallings you know like, yeah you feel like it's your fault and I, I could be completely uneducated on the statement i'm about to make but you know most of the time i think it's because of the the an issue with a woman not not the man, you know. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. You, like you'd assume be. it straight away. <clears throat> you, on Absolutely. Most yeah. IVF things where, you, yeah, we've had an IVF baby, the the, the woman gets looked at. But yep. It, yep, they a lot of the time, not the case. Like a, an older woman trying to carry a baby yeah. or something like that. Um, yeah, whatever medical other situations there might be in the world. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I, I think I took that on, on board probably a bit too personally. Um, to the point that, or well, when we had Bella, number one, she was born with club foot as well, um, and that's I said earlier. I'm so proud of that girl. Like oh. she, from the day she was born, she had operations on her on her foot. And look, yeah, it was like, tough. It was tough. Oh, I remember seeing you. It, yeah. Absolutely, <clears throat> but again, compared to what other parents face in the world, like yeah, I, I don't even want to talk about it, but. Yeah, but it's still fucking... It's such a big process having a baby and, and <clears throat> especially going through something like that. It's yep. so personal. It's different from fucking person to person. Oh, 100%. It doesn't get talked about too much, does no, it? No, you know? I, I don't think it does. Um, and probably the biggest... I, I, I don't know, maybe the, the takeaway from that, it's it's relevant in our life. Mm. Yeah, correct. Like, there, there might be... There, there are kids... Like, we had to go to Perth Children's Hospital every time. Um, to see the specialist in that and you see the worst of the worst Mm. like kids walking around with limbs missing cancer leukemia yeah I hate talking about that shit oh same here it happens and you think your daughter with club foot in one foot is just absolutely nothing but it's all relevant like it was massive to us absolutely I remember when we received the news for that um, that Bella would be born with club foot like we we thought the world had ended like no and oh fuck i'm glad you mentioned that because um there's something it, well this is uh goes without saying as soon as that fucking you you lay your eyes on that baby that's fucking 
there's a diff- there's something that happens in your head oh. and that they're, they're, they're more important than any other kid yep. on the earth. No, you're bang on. I, I say that to... Where you I'll... become so protective oh. and anything that goes wrong with them, you're like, fucking no, 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 please no. Who would have you know? ever thought that a little human being, if Bella needed my heart tomorrow, yep, I'd have someone ripping my heart out of my chest right now. Yeah. And that's, that's not a, you know, a... a made up bullshit claim I would Have be it. on the operation table oh, right now I'm with I would you. not I know you a well enough to second know. Yeah. guess she needs my heart and I have to die tomorrow mm. let's get it out tonight so she's good to go tomorrow Ooh, John um, Q Remember, is it John Q um, the movie yes with Denzel yeah yeah, yeah. fucking hell um, but yeah and then so we, we I suppose dealt with that and have then, you, do, do you, sorry to interrupt, have no. you told her about, does she know, is she aware that, uh, or is this just normal it, for she, her, dude? Look, it's probably somewhat normal, but we haven't hid it from it. Like, she, poor thing had to have boots on her, on her feet every single night since, uh, probably about one month old. But, the, like, the operations a poor little thing went through. She yeah. had to have her Achilles tendon cut. Fuck, man. And then an extension put onto the tendon, because if they don't do that... What it does, as the body grows, the tendon pulls the foot back back into that club foot position. Jesus. So it's got to be extended so it can pull back around and the tendon's long enough to actually go with it. Um, so she had that. She yeah, had a foot in casts yeah. and poor thing hasn't known anything different until her fourth, uh, or fourth Christmas and that's when we got told oh, by the specialist. This, this like, Christmas, ca- huh? Yeah, a couple of months before that. Christmas, you can take them off. Like we could have t- taken them off like two months before, but he said, "Look, I advise you to try and yeah, keep them just, on to Christmas." Yeah. So that was our aim, and we kept saying to Bella, "What happens Christmas Day?" And she goes, "Boots." And it fucking was. Gone. I remember at Brecky, it was a good <clears throat> fucking Christmas. Uh, Brecky, this yeah, it was. Wasn't but it? um, yeah, I remember. I remember that. That's ne- such a big thing. But it's normal wish. even for us. But then I think to myself, like, that would have been tough, dude. Oh, it on every night oh, it was. It was for us. Yeah, and, and that's sleeping, and you, you know, yeah, fuck. It, it was hard as parents, um, doing that every night, and you had to do the boots up pretty tight. But I suppose you got to think of the the outcome as well. Oh, like, fucking oath! I, she's there. She's breathing. She's talking. Oh, she's laughing with you. And, but and then even with that, she comes six oh. weeks early as well. Oh, fuck. so <clears throat> oh yeah, I do remember this. Yeah, the first. I don't know, three, four weeks of her life, she was in hospital. That ICU or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, NICU. Uh, yeah, that's it. Neo, yeah. Neonatal care or something like that. Um, and that, I have not experienced that, but I've definitely seen kids in that, and it's fucking heart-wrenching. Oh, we, we've had friends. Especially your own kid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, Terry and Wade. Are you Te- Terry and Wade. Yeah. They, they, ours is an overnight stay in a hotel compared to what they went through. Um, I've got to give it to them like they're just the strongest people I know mm. to do what they've done. But I, I mean, I struggled getting up every morning. I'd go to the hospital with Marie, and again, Marie just great. I'd leave her at the hospital, go and do my day job, and then come back at night time, feed Bella. <clears throat> yeah, I remember talking to you during all that shit. Yeah, it was just your life. It was yeah, just normal, the, and it was even normal for us. You're I like, oh care. no, I'm just gonna pop by and you you do it. Yeah, like, you just fuck. get it done. Like you're a parent now. Yeah? <laughs> like mm. you got this little. And that's angel. one thing that I haven't, that I reckon doesn't get talked about enough is like all the little experiences that add up to the bit, biggest experience of your life. Like, um, for example, the panic that goes through your brain when, okay, uh, you know, water's broke or something like that yep. to sitting, I don't know if you had the same experience to, uh, as a dad sitting in, like they put you in, they take, uh, well, for, sorry. <laughs> fucking heading off in another direction here, but when Sherry had, uh, what do you call it, uh, c- cesarean, so they take her through, and then I have to put on all the, the scrubs yep. or whatever, yep. and you sat in this fucking corridor, I've, I've done it three to- two times, mm. and you're sitting there alone, and it's just your fucking life's changed. Like, um, your life is changing from this fucking moment on. And it's little that little bit of reflective time that it's like, okay, in you come, and then it's like you're fucking watching people prod them, and you're watching fucking... Um, oh, I suppose ours was a little bit different in the way that we were literally sitting at home. I'd just finished the laundry renovations at our house. <laughs> literally that day. And I cooked 
homemade hamburgers for me and Marie. And Marie just goes, oh, I feel sick. And then we rang Brad and Sam. Marie said, oh, I feel sick. I don't feel right. Sam said, look, just to be sure, ring the hospital. Ring the hospital. They said, look, just to be sure, come down, check you out. Yeah, so right there, your heart's beating fast. It's such a personal thing, like yeah. you say. You're um, panicking. And that was a Saturday night. Marie had her baby shower the, the following day on Sunday. Oh. Went in and Marie went and done tests or I was with her. Um, and the nurse come back and she goes, um, your wife's four centimetres dilated. I said, oh, okay, what does that mean? She goes, well, you are having a baby tomorrow. I was like, oh. And she goes, so the baby shower that you've got planned for tomorrow, cancel it because it ain't happening. Um, That's six weeks early. You're, six you're weeks early. You're within two <clears throat> weeks and... Yep, um, and then it's like shit. Shit got real, like real quick. Mm. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. And I've, I've, I think it still took a while to kick in. So we got put into a room. Did you um, eat your burger? I think I did. Yeah, <laughs> poor Marie. I think she. Oh, I think she wrapped up half and yeah back because she had to stay in after a cesarean as well because the nurse, uh, the the obstetrician was good enough to say um, the drive was too long between Jane Brook and Subi. Yeah. Um, so we got to stay in there for a week, which is. It was pretty cool to be honest. Like we mm. could order off a menu, and I yeah, I made friends with the, uh, the the food staff there, and got extra chocolate cake when I needed it. And <laughs> it was good, um, but yeah, it just overnight got got very real. I didn't even have a um, a car seat in the car because I yeah thought to myself oh, I still got another six weeks to go. So um, yeah, had had Bella. Um, she come out. She was in yeah the neonatal ward for. I don't know, three or four weeks. Um, then she come home and she wasn't a very good sleeper. Mm. Um, and I, I think knowing that I was the, the short falling for all of that lead up, you know, the IVF and all that stuff, um, I felt that I needed to be there even more for Marie, like get up for every single feed. Yeah, gotcha. Um Fuck while working too. While working full time, um, mate. There, there was times that I had um, a sports um, fitness watch at the time. I was running on an hour and a half sleep, two hours sleep, three hours sleep a day. And you can tell, can't you? It almost feels like a hangover. Uh, that or like a, a, a flu, like the on onset yeah. of a flu. Yeah. Like, um, just sinuses block up, and you just feel a bit dopey and stuff like that. But. Um, I got through it. We, or we we got through it, I should say. Fucking oath. Um, and would I change any of it for today? Not at all. Like I, Good like shit. Like I said, that girl is just so yeah. dear. Whatever needs to happen to get her here. Oh, right? absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. So, do you, yeah. Do you find you miss, <laughs> do you miss her now? <laughs> Talking about her. I, I, no, look, I do. I, I, I love going home every single day yeah. just to see her and listen to what little stories yeah. oh she rang me on facetime at work dude. yesterday and she was pretending she was at work and <laughs> walking around and saying oh here dad i'm going to show you the office and it's your house <laughs> yeah our house and mum in the kitchen and um oh she's just a little character yeah. she's a yeah she's a gemma fuck mate what a journey though eh? yeah absolutely it's, it's so I'm hard saying. to talk about because oh, i'm I think I've said this about six fucking times. So personal. It is, yeah, absolutely. And again, and I got you on a podcast. I, <laughs> no, look, I, I look, I, I, I can only assume that I went through mental health, yeah, through that whole thing. Yeah. And if well, not that I'm an inspiration to anything, like not even an iota like that. But if me talking about it out loud fucking helps no. someone in any way, like fucking awesome, yeah. Because honestly, it oh, just you can see why sleep deprivation. And I said this to everyone that I, I speak to and that will listen to me. You can see why sleep deprivation is a, a form of torture. Because oh, oh mate, so the, important, isn't it? Oh my god, the, the sleepless nights and the like, the thin, thin line. You know, geez, we used to blue like cats and dogs. You know, yeah. over stupid little shit, and because of that, no sleep. I literally, by the time this gets out, I'm sure they would have had their kid, but I got handed a card today. One of the staff at um, at work is having a, a child. And the, probably my little snippet of advice is teamwork makes a dream work. Like, yeah. Work is a... T- and, and no... Marie had to pull me up so many times and say, hey, 
we're a team in this. Yeah. Like, don't take it out on me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah. Fucking hell, eh? Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty full on. Pretty mm, full on. When but, you think back on it and reflect it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, probably the, the biggest thing about that was having Brad on the sidelines who I could talk to. Oh, it's fucking To, to help. I just found after I'd talked to him, and I, I, look, I'll be honest, I went and saw a doctor at one stage as well um, to get, I suppose, assessed for mental health. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it turned out that I had severe depression, severe anxiety, severely stressed. Um, Fuck, when was that? During the height of everything? Um, pro- I think it was just after, mm. which I know you're going to touch on because something else was yeah. massive that happened right there and then as well um, but yeah I look back and think fuck you, you went through some shit I fucking like, know yeah <clears throat> well especially what we might get into next yeah. 100% cool go on I'm flying yeah you Cheers, probably mate. got to do cams huh? you know too well you know the mental health thing that you're talking about what uh, what prompted you to go and get checked um I think there was an That's episode. That's so good that you did, though. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, but you, you think, oh, that's... Uh, that's I'm right. I'm that. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. silly. Um, I think there was a time when I was... I went away for holidays in Bali. And... Oh, okay, yeah. I do remember you telling me. Extremely busy year at work. And then... I don't know, it was like I dropped off. My holiday was planned for me. The the person that we went with planned everything. So <clears throat> as soon as I got off the plane, we had an itinerary. I didn't need to really think. Where every other day for 300 and, I don't know, whatever it is, 40 yeah. days of the year, that's all i done. Think, mm-hmm. think, 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 think. Overthink. Um, so we arrived at Bali. I... Uh, me and my friend had to go down to get some fresh water and some snacks and stuff. Marie said to me, here's money, exchange it for um, Bali, Bali money. I said, yeah, no worries. So I remember we walked down, we went to the shop. And at that point, I, I don't know, I, I, I couldn't talk, I couldn't communicate. I don't know if I was communicating, but in my head, I couldn't talk. So bought some stuff there, and I think Mick paid. Then I was carrying a 24-pack of water or whatever it was. So then we went and stopped at a money exchange. I knew in my head that I needed to change money, but I couldn't Fuck. couldn't com- uh, compute or I couldn't talk to mm. the person behind the counter and say, I need to change this. So I was standing there like an idiot like a mute oh man that's couldn't wild. talk didn't know what was happening so I me and Mick walked away back to the hotel oh back to the villa and Marie goes did you exchange money I said no I didn't then from then I just laid in bed and all, all I wanted to do was sleep um, but we had dinner booked that night so I got up <clears throat> we went out for dinner and Went to a place called Motel Mexico or Hotel Mexico or something like that. Sitting there with my friend. There was another family there with us. And all I remember is a drunk guy there and talking about on being on drugs and buying drugs and, and stuff like that. Any other day of the year, I would have just probably smacked him in the mouth or mm. something like that. But I remember just sitting there, because the kids are at the table as well. I would have said, mate, piss off, you know. Like, yeah. I didn't say anything. I couldn't. Fuck, couldn't dude. voice what anything the hell? and then <clears throat> and like after speaking to health professionals and that the only way that I could explain it was like I was sitting in a movie theatre watching yourself watching my life play out on a screen in front of me but not being able to talk or oh what the fuck you know it, it's um That's yeah, it was scary weird. yeah it was That's scary it was. for you mm. and then come back from Bali oh, but then I was alright for a couple of days in Bali um, come back from Bali, started work, and I remember driving down to Bell Divers and not. I rocked up at a job in Bell Divers and thought, 
why am I here? Like, I, I don't know why I'm why I've stopped my car. Yeah, dude. It's like your brain trying to fucking give you clues. Oh, still, I, I, I still, wild, I still can't answer it. Honestly, like it's probably for people that are a lot more um, brainier than I am. But um, <clears throat> and then I rang a couple of my work colleagues and said, "Yeah, I'm. I don't know what's going on. Um, my head's not right." And um, yeah, I don't know. I think I, I basically went from there. Fuck, that's good. A lot of yeah. people would fuck it off, you know, uh, and block it out. Yeah, uh, I tried. I think I tried to, but mm. I just couldn't. Like, I'm operating a car. I, I didn't, like, uh, you know, you, you probably, I don't know, a good 45-minute drive, and then you arrive where your, your destination or you think your destination mm. is. Like, why am I here? Like, I don't even know why I'm supposed to be here right now. Am I supposed to be checking a job or? Fucking hell. Yeah. Do you, um, I, I didn't know whether we should talk about this, but I'm, I'm fucking got to, because I feel like it might have something to do with it. Mm. Think, I think I know what's coming. Mm, Mum? Yeah. Um, so my question that I've got here, it's not really a question, it's more like I wanted you to talk about it. I wanted you to actually talk about it a bit, because I haven't spoken to you much about it, and yep. I feel like I'll try to explain, uh, well... It, Mum passed away, but me, Mitch, the rest of the family, we got to grieve. You were put into work mode still again, being the administrator. Yeah, I I suppose um, I'd I'd even probably take it back a couple of steps with, um, I don't know, mum was always very shut off about her health and stuff like that. The only time I'd find out about her being in Perth was... She'd call me from a hospital bed at, um, yeah, or, or one or of those hospitals partner, in Perth yeah. or whatever. Or, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't really hear from Jeff. It was usually mum. And I'd say, well, what's going on? Where are you? And, and actually, I think Jeff did ring me once and said, mum's been flown down. And then I'd ring mum. She goes, hey, darling, how are you? And it's like, mum, where, where are you? Mm. And it's like, I'm um, Royal Perth. And it's like, fuck's sake, like, what's, what's wrong? Um, oh, I don't know, darling. It's, it's, um, Fuck, that's exactly how she spoke. Yeah, right? I don't know, some some health thing. and So I'd, I'd drive down there with, um, oh, I think it was without Marie one time, and went in there, there's yelling going on from other patients. I'll leave it at that. And I said, Mum, haven't you got private health? She goes, yeah. I said, well, why the hell are we here? I said, no, give me your phone. So I rang up, got her moved out of yeah, you took Earth. on a lot of that responsibility. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, there's other other shit, obviously. I didn't I didn't talk to mum after mum and dad split for a while. So yeah, probably a little bit of guilt there, like the missed years and stuff like that. And probably the one, one of the biggest regrets I have about not talking to mum over that time um, was missing out on Nan's passing. Cause mm, yeah, I, I think that too. Didn't I, get, I didn't go to a funeral and I probably fucked about that. Didn't get along with um, Pop mm-hmm. as well as I suppose Mitch did. And like, I think Mitch had a understanding with him or, or whatever it was a, a, a um, link or whatever. Mm. Um, <clears throat> where my memories of and, and I was quite front with mum while she was still alive like i just didn't have any good memories of him like, no i agree the only memories i had of him was him hitting me like with telling a rolled off. up newspaper yeah and, yeah telling me off and yeah just wasn't a nice person but nana far out what an absolute, angel she was oh, an absolute, absolute angel, angel on yeah. earth yeah so um so yep yeah, looked after mum and then uh, i think she went through a, a quadruple heart bypass or something stints like that and stuff like stints that stints yeah. in her heart and all that um, and then she spent four weeks with us in recovery. Um, oh, got through right, that. Yeah. Um, she went back up to Exmouth, lived a life. You know, and we're yeah, still she'd talking. Come and stay right? with you, and then she come stay with us. Yep. Remember for like a. Um, and then, I think again, I got a phone call from Jeff saying, um, "Mum's in hospital." So, Mum, what's going on? Ended up. Um, going to see mum i think she was at charlie gardeners or something at this this time um and then i found out and and this is the time frame like where 
I'm not 100%, but Marie, we just found out Marie was pregnant. I can't remember whether it was the first time or the second time. Um, anyway, so mum knew that news. Mum was mum at that point. And like for the conversation's sake, that was on a Monday. Then I think the Tuesday or the Wednesday, like I stayed with mum the, the, most of the time. Like I'd, I'd spend most of my time there. I'd work from the, um, I'd go and do a bit of work and then go and see her. Then um, I was going, well, what's going on? What's, what's wrong here? And then I think she got moved to Hollywood. Then um, I said to the doctor, what's wrong with her? Like none of you can tell me anything. Yeah. What, what's going on? Um, and then it kind of came out that she had a, a, a bad cancer um, and that I, I suppose I'd like to not harp on about it too much. Uh, she had six months to live. That was on a Tuesday. And I think you and Pete were there. Uh, you and Mitch were there. You had a camping trip yeah. sorted. Mm. I said, boys, go and do your camping trip. I'll look after mum. I've got six months with her. Like, Go and do what you got to do. She, and she wants that as well. She was full comprehensive. Coherent. Coherent, yeah. yep. Um, but so I, that, I remember exactly where I was when you called me and said, no, nah, you're right, go. Yep. Um, fuel station. That was on a Tuesday. Um, then things got worse. Mum stopped eating. I remember feeding her watermelon. I said, come on, please, mum, just yeah, one piece of watermelon. Yeah, I remember being there with you like, while you were doing it. Remember that? I remember yep. nights, yeah. Um, that was fucked. You know, and that selfishly... Was fucked to watch. <clears throat> oh, 100%. Um, and selfishly, I, like, it's like, fuck's sake, mum, like... Do it for us. Do, do it so you can fucking I'm see about my about to have a kid, yeah, yeah correct. Um, but I think she'd just given up. Which, which is what well, life... Uh, I, I, I don't know. I can never... I hope... Well, I don't know. I'll be there one day, but... Um, so, yeah, I suppose all that... Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday just went downhill. And then I think it was Friday morning, I got called in by the palliative care or whatever it was saying, you need to come in. Um, went in and um, got told that she won't make the weekend. And then I tried to get a hold of um, you guys because you were away camping. Mm. Luckily, I think Jared, Jared was on top of a sand yeah. dune at that Ooh. time and um, got reception because you guys didn't have a reception. Ooh. And then um, I said, you guys need to get back. Um, you come back and I think the traffic was bad and mum passed away that afternoon, Friday yeah. afternoon. Um, you were stuck in traffic and yeah, that, that was probably the hardest thing that you didn't get to see her. Oh, I think we just missed her. I, we just yeah like literally it. I think you're I, like where the fuck are you yeah oh. yeah 20 I remember probably the message you texted me missed out like, by 20 sorry, minutes mate, she's gone yeah fuck man um but it was it's not so much that it's more you mm. afterwards oh you, even, you were fucking robbed you were robbed of grieving I feel do you feel like you did properly no because it was like during no. the hardest time you were fucking no. Dealing with shit. Oh, 100%. Um, <clears throat> so from... Uh, you were just busy. Straight away, you were oh, busy had to the be. whole time. I had to be. And it fucking sucked, man. Um, Mum's, I suppose, dying word, trust her partner. Mm. Um, I had no reason to think otherwise. Um, and then shit started to unravel from there. Um, Money got taken out of... A large sum of money got taken out of her account. Then, just after that, which I wasn't... We didn't know about. um, I got made um, director of her... Yeah, estate or whatever whatever the jargon is. Because whilst this was happening, I had to ask the the shitty question of mum, and this is why mum could still communicate... Mum, have you got a will? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry to ask, but I've got to make sure. It's such a tough time for you. Oh, it is. No, it was. Because was... you were the oldest. <clears throat> oh, yeah, and I, I felt that as the oldest brother, I've got to, I've got step, to step up. up. Um, so oh, I fucking felt for you. 
Yeah, but I, I don't. I like. I still don't. I don't need a pat on the back or or anything like that. It's just what I like. Mum would have wanted that. Like, oh fucking you and killed it. I'd like to think that she'd be proud of what happened. Oh, of course and she would. Fuck me. Probably looking down on someone, thinking, "How dare you?" Oh yeah. What you done? Yeah. And and again, I, I, look, I won't <clears throat> I won't go into too much detail there, but yeah, I had to be the. Um, yeah, the director, I've forgotten all the terminology, but, geez, I've turned one-eighth lawyer during that whole thing. Mm. Geez, I had to be switched on and then dealing with mum's partner's lawyer who was like, geez, I can bite at the easiest of things and this guy was just saying things to round me up and it was, luckily I had, Scumbag. I had Rob in my corner. Um, yeah. He was just... He's a fucking yeah. beautiful bloke, mate. Um, he helped me out a lot with all of the communications and um, and and dealing with it all. But it was so fresh, though, dude. Oh, hundred so percent. Li- literally, I went home you. Friday night. I-, I cried, cried. Obviously, seeing Mum go because I heard her take her oh, what I thought oh. was her last breath, and I went outside to the nurse and I said, oh, "I think Mum's gone." Um, she come in. She goes, "Let me check, darling," and. A massive shout out to those nurses at Hollywood Hospital. Mm. Honestly, God, they were the most. Any boring. fucking nurse, actually. Oh, oh yeah, Look, yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't. I shouldn't mum was a nurse. That. Yeah, yeah. Mum, mum was a nurse. That. But um, they are the most beautiful, beautiful people. They like treated me like a son while I was up there. They were just so beautiful and so thoughtful and caring and all that. Um, I hope one of them hears it and and plays it plays it for people that work there because they are just all amazing people I, mm. I, I couldn't do what they do oh man wow. um for for any amount of money but um yeah and the nurse come in and said no um she's she's still with us um but she was gone several seconds later um i remember crying there you know, i had to deal with some stuff that wasn't the nicest of no. things like coming back in and seeing a sister rifle through her bags already not even two minutes after she passed that's um, fucked that's so fucked uh, you try and put things like that yeah back I in, know like they're I just know. bad people that are gonna have bad karma you know but how different mum was you know compared to that oh, she wasn't like that yeah but anyway um, I remember going home having a shower having a bit of a cry in the shower <clears throat> I got out of the shower Marie had been down to Henry Jack's in honour of mum, because her, her go-to burger was <laughs> the uh, Whopper with cheese, heavy, heavy mayonnaise. <laughs> heavy mayonnaise. So I remember Marie bought that. I had people messaging me. Um, I remember sitting down and eating. I, I, hadn't, I couldn't even remember the last time I had a meal. I took one bite of the burger and had that much fucking mayonnaise in it. It just <laughs> fell on the Slid paper. I don't know how mum bloody ate it. <laughs> she let it sit for a bit. Remember that? Oh. <laughs> Fucking then put them in the freezer. She was only a little thing, wasn't she? Yeah, wasn't she? <laughs> Jesus. Um, and literally, I ended up turning my phone off that night because, albeit all my friends were beautiful during it and they were sending me messages, but as soon as I read a message, I just yeah, man. cried. And I thought, nah, I, I need sleep. Like, I hadn't mm. slept in a couple of days. So... Um, How'd you go? Did you sleep? I think that night I was just... Fucking exhausted. exhausted. I, I'd, I'd hit the limiter. I was, yeah. I mean, my body clock. I think I would have got up at five o'clock the next day. But um, then I uh, look at. I think the next. Yeah, it was a Saturday and then a Sunday. Uh, I don't even. I, I think oh, I started funeral arrangements. Um, and that's when we I found didn't that get a rest. You didn't yeah, get no. Time, dude. No, I, I literally didn't. Fuck. But look, without without going into too much detail, because there was some untoward stuff that did happen in my eyes. Um, but anyway, mm. I'm going down a, a rabbit hole. Um, straight into funeral arrangements. Um, Mum wanted to be cremated. Um, <clears throat> she she had a couple of other requests that I'll be honest. I or well, there was one request that I didn't honour. She didn't want any flowers on her casket. Um, but I just put a, yeah, a cool. floral arrangement on there because it honestly it just looks look, stark look bare and mm. um i think mum deserved better than that if i'm honest but um i heard the day of her funeral it was in the afternoon i went to work that morning um 
worked half a day, then went to mum's funeral. Um, all while I think I was just thinking, I'll keep my mind active. Like, I don't want to, you know, harp on it a bit. I'll just have a quick sip. Yeah, you're right, mate. Um, yeah, and look, I had people from work there to support me as yeah, well. But I thought that was cool. <clears throat> that was a um, that was a hard day. That was a oh, pretty hard day. Fuck, mate. Um, you know, or well, you know, I used to do a bit of DJing and um, MC work and stuff like that. And you know, I've done wedding MCing and and stuff like that. And I thought, I know it's going to be hard, but I'll, I'll do Mum's speech a piece of piece. So. Mm. wrote down all the stuff I've still got it on my iPhone actually the speech that I've done but I knew that I'd start crying and then I actually had a joke there for that you know who thought it was a good idea to cut onions in here mm. but I just broke down I couldn't couldn't um, couldn't no, I remember put t- two words together <clears throat> but um, yeah ended up getting over the, the hurdle and um, spitting out what I needed to um, but seeing the the casket drop um, oh. was yeah that's that was rough, um, and then yeah just went into defense mode. I had to defend what I thought that mum yeah of course. again she died without a will. Mm. Um, what I thought mum would want us to have, what she would have thought was fair, wasn't what the other person thought was fair. He mm. thought throwing her bank card on the table with X amount yeah, of dollars on it. That. I'll never forget that. And then I'll throw a little jab out there and telling us to pay for his lunch and his beer on that card. Fuck. So that's coming out of our inheritance. Mm. That That's it. He gets to keep the house. He gets to... The keep, house that mum and dad paid for. Yep. Work their fucking ass off. And... You know, the brand new car that I helped mum buy. The, mm. um, listen, oh, well, I got her a Mazda and then she didn't even yeah. tell me that she... She goes, I didn't <laughs> want to let you down. I don't care. I would have helped you buy the Nissan. But anyway, um, yeah, just went into defence mode. And then, look, I'll, I'll never talk to him again. No. Nah. I've got no interest. Um, at the time... I wish nothing but the worst for that guy because mm. I think what he'd done was just one of the lowest acts um, that I've ever had to, I suppose, come across or experience. Um, but now, as, as time goes on, I don't yeah. forgive him by all means. I, I definitely don't forgive him. I, I, I have no ambition of talking to the guy, socialising with the guy, nothing at all. I've, I've just got. What, what do you think you'd do if you'd seen him? Bought the other way. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. Yeah. You couldn't say the same thing four years ago. No, like oh, when no. I was going through it, oh, geez, I wanted to wring his neck. Mm. I could have done it quite easily, but um, no, I, I don't know. It was pro- probably a little bit of maturity might have crept in. Might have been mum helping from upstairs. Yeah, but that's it. I had to get a job done. I had to do it professionally, and oh you did so well mate yeah and no, I, I want to thank you for that no, but it's no, like no need, um no yeah there is because <clears throat> i wish that you didn't i wish you you couldn't have been i wish that you didn't get robbed of that you know it fucking sucks oh at, look it's at, like, yeah you just lost your mum yeah fuck you sort at, this out here's a bunch of paperwork oh and look and more I, honestly the, the amount of like marie was a good support as well but the amount of shit that i had to go through like even um, filing the papers to become the administrator of the, of the um, will or the the estate, I got there and then the wording was wrong. And luckily, the lady behind the counter was helping me do the wording. And um, yeah, you've got to get that stamped and um, sealed and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, and and look, without Rob, I, I would have been. Mm, yeah, I'll, I'll f- I think I'll forever be in his fucking debt for that. Yeah. But- I just a beautiful because it was all about fucking business for him. He was he was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, look, and he, uh, uh, no doubt he's probably man. been through stuff like that before. But yeah, I I wouldn't have been able to do what we achieved without him there. Like that's for sure. You did beautifully, mate. No, I truly did. 
I'll okay. just check this shit. Oh, good. All right, mate. Back in. Last one. <laughs> good. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate no, you um, talking about that. No, no it's it's um, You have told me most of that. Yep. But then there were some details there which I really didn't... It's very confronting yeah, what you is. went through, mate. And yeah. I think the thing that needs to come out of this podcast is that it's... Um, I love how you, you actually fucking said, no, I'm going to go... Of course, you know, like a Chloe Hesse, you wait for something to happen until you actually... But the fact that you had the balls to go and get, you know, to get get checked for this yeah. type of shit. Yeah. How do you think, how do you think you're traveling with it all now? Like, Oh, look, I'll, again, being pretty open, um, I was medicated for, I suppose, the mental health side of things. And I, I think I only found this out... I think when you've done a podcast yeah, with, with that, else. With yeah, with Paul, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was fucking stunned. And it was a medication that you're supposed to wean off and not that I'm a hero or anything, but I just gave it up one day and I said, no. Um, oh, no, no. Look, I had that, that thing, but there was um, probably a couple of days before that where I was forgetting to take it, legitimately mm. forgetting to take it. I thought at the end of the day, I was like, oh, I feel all right. Mm. Try, try it again. There, there was a time that, I'd done that and I was like, oh shit. I remember I was out for lunch with some work colleagues and fuck, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I'd run out of my prescription and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I started like pacing. In a, oh, oh really, 100%. Man. To the point where I called the surgery, uh, to the, called the um, doctor surgery and got him to do like a telehealth with me over the, over the phone, sent me a script. I went and picked it up. Wow, mate. Yeah. Fucking so, hell. Yeah. No, it's, it's a weird thing, man. Weird thing. But, um, yeah, then I just forgot to take him, forgot to take him, forgot to take him. No, feel fine, feel fine, feel fine. And then I thought, no, I'm going to go without. And to this day, I haven't yeah. really touched them. Just on the fucking Dexies. On, yeah, <laughs> so, something like Isn't that. Isn't that now. what it is? Yeah, <laughs> Vive Ants or something like that. But um, Fuck. we talked about that off camera. But I just mm. find now that, I don't know, I probably... Oh, look, it was probably the volume of emails back in the day as well, but yeah. I always set myself the target of clear your inbox before you go to go home. Um, now I've, I've got a clear inbox by like 11 o'clock yeah. in the Arvo and I'm planning and doing other things, but um, yeah. Amazing with what you've been through, especially, you know, I've been through stuff, you've been through yeah, stuff, but absolutely. you know your own Everyone journey, yeah. how you go through a storm, like it's a, yeah, it's and a big fucking storm, my man. Again, we, we spoke about it off camera as well. There was a car crash that I was yeah, involved exactly. in Yeah, exactly. We are naming it. Um, Nana. Nana, part, my, our grandmother passed away mm-hmm. um, on my dad's side. Um, I broke my ankle. Um, Mum passed away. Um, a... Um, Fuck, there was something else. No, the, the IVF. That's right, yeah. Um, oh, not failure, the f- but the, the, yeah, the first round that wasn't, yeah. wasn't successful. Um, you think you're all right at the time, but you, you don't realise that maybe it is some sort of fucking trauma that hit you. Oh, and whether it's come out later on, yeah, Chris, and, you know? Yeah, and look, I think there I is know. that um, stigma or persona, like you're a, you're a guy and you, you just keep Fuck powering on, like, fucking, fucking, come on, stop being yeah. a pussy and get into it kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and hey, different strokes for different folks and different horses for courses as well. But different people deal with things differently. I thought it was yeah. bulletproof, and I think yeah, it hit, it it all caught up with me. Yeah, at that when you when you couldn't talk at Bali. Yeah, I looked that, and then yeah, the the the, the other stuff I went through after that. Um, yeah, it catches up, and I know it's a, a generic line, but yeah, just chat to a mate talk yeah. pick up the phone ring like again my outlet was probably Brad Brado, yeah. speaking of Brad um, you know I'd, I'd pop past the yard um, have a have a chat to him I'd get home and I'd feel much better like yeah a weight's been lifted off you know um, wow well, but yeah yeah fuck man no it, it's yeah but do you know what like some of these things that you, you like you it was a shock to me when I found out that night. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've always been quite vocal with you to say, "Dude, come on, I'm here." Yeah, but it, it oh, is no. a little bit different. You know, you, you got to find who you're comfortable. That's most com- Brado, you and Brado. Yeah, 
No, well, he was fuck. best man at my wedding. Yeah. So, um, it, it's not even that, Pete. So, like, don't ever put the thought on you like, oh, fucking, you didn't come to me. No, no not it's, like that. I just wanted to make sure that you knew oh, 100%. that I was. No, I you know, know that. And like, like I am with you. You we, are for me. We, we are close. Like, shit, we went to work every single day together like, mm. for five, six years. Um, oh, there's a lot of the story that's been left out, you know. Oh, like, there's so much. There is so yeah. much, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's, I suppose, feeling comfortable with that person. And then one of the biggest things was I I didn't know what the fuck was going on yeah. in my head. Yeah. I couldn't explain it. I, to this day, I still can't explain it, like what I went through. I'd, 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 like I said, the best way of explaining it, sitting in a movie theater watching your life That's and so not being able to interact. That is so confronting, dude. Yeah. Fuck. How so, do you feel now? No, I feel After all of that now, honestly? Feel good. The yeah. only medication I'm taking... I'm, diabetic albeit the fake diabetes the, the type 2 um, so I'm on medication for that and also the ADHD so yeah, yeah wow yeah yeah. you do seem a lot fucking happy like oh it's amazing how you know when dad and I used to call you you, used to, you know don't stress don't stress but it was yeah. a lot more There's yeah a lot more than that bubbling beneath the surface oh absolutely you know? yeah fucking yeah. always is yeah and, yeah. and oh, I'm not the only person in the, like, my no that's what I mean worries is a personal freckle thing. Freckle on my face compared to some of the other stuff that people go through. Um, oh, that's like that. I, I said it on a very early podcast, a solo one, where this wicked saying, <clears throat> if everyone threw their problems into a pile, you'd want to fucking snatch yours back oh, real 100%, quick. 100%. <laughs> so, yeah, I oh know. Everyone says it, but yeah, life's too short. Like, fucking know. To think about that worst case scenario or, or what you might be thinking, just reach out. Yeah, it's so easy just to to talk. Did you ever have any fucking dark thoughts? Like, no, no, not not in that way. No, nah, not good. Not in this time frame. There was um, oh, once I, a I time. Know what you're yeah, about. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, th- that's it. And mate, especially yeah. now that I've got little Bella, Jesus. Oh, who, fuck. who would want to leave? She'd slap leave you. this world for that. No, nah, no, nah, exactly. And it's funny how you get through all that shit. Oh, eh? yep. So even dad, dad went, you know, through the divorce and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Went through fucking shit yeah. at that time. Yeah, and I mean, even dad's divorce. Like, I wanted to be there for dad. Like, I don't know. And you were. I don't know if you get you dad on here one time. I, yeah, that'd be interesting. I'd, I'd like to, to think. Oh, I know. Dad said it to me before. Like, I was his sounding board. I, I was. Oh, he's absolutely yeah. said that to me a lot. Um, like you would, he'd say would probably he'd be too young. To, yeah, but he'd say also that he took a lot out on you and. Oh, but mate, you know. like I said, I'll, yeah, probably for another conversation. But I was a little prick to him, and oh, yeah, like I yeah, said, but in the scheme of things, we're making you sound like you're fucking aggressive, fucking, you know, like oh, a the, drug fucking. No, no, like, no not a, nothing not like all, that. But just a cheeky fucker. Oh, uh, exactly, <laughs> just mischievous, if you'd like to call yeah. it, but. I would do anything to get out of a day of work to the point where I'd go and pick a fight with you guys. <laughs> so we could have a barney. I don't think it was picking a fight. It was more just like fucking like throwing shit around. Oh, we we that, would, man. It'd be like, I'd, I'd be on your side, though. I remember Dad was arguing <laughs> with me and, and said, right, get out of the car. I thought, fucking oath. I'll, I'm not going to the next job. I'm fucking walking in the bush. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to chill. And then he's day. ringing my phone flat out like, where are you coming yeah. out? of like, Fuck, we're going to have to go to work after this. <laughs> yeah, so, no. But then it's usually a nice day after that. Making him sound like a fucking... He, nah, he, he was such a hectic like worker. Nah, and it's all he knew, mate. I had diabetes at that time. I, I wasn't taking medication. My moods would have been up and down. Yeah, you were fucking but bad. I didn't think you were bad at all. Mate. I hated that job. I just hated it. <laughs> you, got the, you got the mud slinging. You got the bricks. And hot then, day. A oh, hot day. New sites with black sand. And then... You've got to set up scaffold. Oh, fuck, I used to hate that. No, nah, I, I still do think that now, but it's the happiest time I've ever had in Brick Lane now mm. as far as, you know, fuck, remember when we had... Oh, you probably weren't around when we had a bigger team. No. Nah. Just fucking dealing with other guys. That's what yeah. I hate. Yeah, Hey, man, can I have 20 bucks before, you know, the, the tummy you drugged up? Uh, and, oh, I nah. fucking hate it. Yeah. Um, all right. Lighten the mood up. Yeah, no, no. I appreciate you fucking nah. talking about that, mate. I mm-hmm. really do. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, let's. Th- here, here's this is per- like pretty lighthearted. Yeah. Oh shit! I really wanted to tell the story about. Um, 
a good time back then was when you, for some fucking reason, shorts weren't being brought out short enough for you. <laughs> you know oh. the short fucking hard yakka King G shorts that used to come up to like Just halfway up your thigh? Yep. Used to be get shares, my wife. To trim them up a bit higher. <laughs> the pockets would hang out. Uh, only because I think we're, yeah. Yeah, I look like fucking Daisy Dukes. <laughs> Um, Uneven too, Je- dude. Jessica Simpson style. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she was when I made a seamstress back then. But because um, you used to live in front of me. Yeah, correct. We were on a like an investment <clears throat> block. Yeah, where you were in the front and I was in the back. Built the rear house. Um, they were pretty cool times, actually. Oh, 100%. I took them for granted. I wish I no, you know, same, yeah, weird, eh? same. <laughs> um, I think we were working on two stories, and I was up and down the ladder oh, all the time. Oh, and dude, yeah. Just by the end of the day, the shorts were rubbing and just Chafing. getting... Yeah, so... Yeah. I think Shez uh, took to him. Shorter! Yeah. Shorter! <laughs> no, that wasn't the question. I just wanted no. to relive that. No, that so was... So many uh, fucking good times. Yeah, though. absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay, it's lighthearted, but it's very, very... Like, you can expand as much as you want. you just got 13 minutes. No, I mean, no. <laughs> If you had your time again, yeah. what, what would you do? What would you do with your fucking life? Would you start <sighs> off... In that path again, building? Um, no, nah, I'd take it back even further. I would apply myself at school. I was... If anyone looked at me, and I should be now in a podcast about me being a comedian because that's all I wanted to do at school. <laughs> I was just the class clown. Yeah, so... Fuck. I never meant to hurt anyone, even though <clears throat> um, in high school I was... Not, not hurtful, but I was a little shithead. Like, I had a girlfriend in high school who I... Oh, I don't know. It's I, I treated her like shit. Like, I remember being in maths class, borrowed her calculator and then threw it back and it hit her in the head. Like, <laughs> just... I didn't know how to treat a woman, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's probably my only excuse. And um, <laughs> Yeah. Marie's at home going, yeah, fuck you. You still throw remotes at me. No. No, <laughs> no I'm not... Not for three weeks, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, I didn't apply myself at school, and it'd be interesting to see if I did apply myself at school where I would have ended up. It, it'd be a great social experiment to go back and uh, primary school. I spent more time in inter school suspension, which was just directly outside the deputy principal, than yeah. I spent inside the classroom, honestly. Ah. And most of the teachers, I don't reckon, wanted to to have me in their class <laughs> didn't want and to deal with you <clears throat> one of the teachers I absolutely loved was um, Mr Holmes and yeah Andrew yeah um, I just I don't got know, thought the sun shone out of his uh, behind you know I just I don't know if he got me he still had to pull me up a couple of times but um, and then hit high school and I was just the same thing I'd get kicked out of class for I don't know just mucking around or, or something and then proceed to go outside of the classroom, stand on the seats outside with the lockers in front of me. Still fucking And they'd have around. the glass loop yeah. the windows up the top, still trying to make kids laugh <laughs> <clears throat> after I've just been kicked out of class. And it's like, oh, you dickhead. Like, And then, I don't know, me and a couple of mates would go to go and use a photocopier and then I'd be on there doing prank phone calls. Like, <laughs> Gary yeah, Shannon. that's right. It was a fucking phone yeah. too, dude. Yeah. Phrase um, at pose. Phrase at pose, yeah. <laughs> Probably would have been a good fucking radio show. Oh, most, actually, oh honestly, yeah. No, I used to... Hello, Darren DeMello from the all-new 96 yeah. FM. How are you today? <laughs> just calling you with the uh, phrase that pays. And then, um, yeah. People would just guess, guess this song. And <laughs> I had a Walkman or a Disman at the time and I'd get the earphone and put it on the on the phone and guess this song. And it's like Metallica. Uh, like, as if someone's going to know a main, you know, bloody Metallica Yeah, Justice song. for All fucking song. Yeah, yeah. Like number... Six on the album, no one, no one's going to know it. But yeah. Um, yeah, just a class clown. But to answer, yeah, go back and apply myself at school and see where I would have ended up. Ideally, do you have an idea? Like, is there something in your brain where you're like, "Fuck, I'd love to no, do that." No, I, I don't. I don't think I would have been a um, a doctor or a lawyer or something like that. But um, fucking hard one, eh? I, I would have loved to do something in music. Like, I remember being yeah, in music dude. class at high school. I love singing. I'm not good at it, but I love singing. I know words to songs. Very are. good with... You've got the biggest fucking music... Oh, music catalogue in my head. you in the country yeah. now at all? What's that? Are you in the country music? Uh, I'm getting there. I've made a playlist on Spotify called yeah. Ho Down. 
which I'll um, jump on. And, <laughs> it's shit. No, it's yeah, yeah, I'll share everything. <laughs> I'll, well, back to the Lone Star thing. I end up making a Lone Star soundtrack and I've shared it and then posted it to most of the people that I used to work with. Oh, they all jumped on there and added, added songs. Yeah. And, no, it's good. That's a whole other thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Something in music I would have loved. But like again, theatre or so, like mm, something uh, in the performing yeah. arts, maybe? Look, I, I've Fucking done... interesting to think that. I've done vocal ensemble at high school and I just piss farted around. I yeah. remember uh, in the air, uh, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, yeah. Lion King, and I was just doing falsetto like... <laughs> And everyone's like singing normally and I'm just being a dickhead as usual. Um, Ruined all their careers. But something like that. And then I remember going and watching Jersey Boys at Burswood um, and I walked away when from When was that. this? Quite recently? Like oh. in your older life? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, I thought, oh, look, I love the love the music but I'm not going to like... You know, I, don't hate me but Grease rubs me up the wrong way. Like you don't walk through <laughs> fucking life singing... Yeah, like you don't yeah. go and have a fight with someone. Like, I'm gonna punch your head in. <laughs> Shit like that. It just doesn't sit right with me. So I went to Jersey Boys with that same frame of mind. Where oh, I'm gonna well, hate this well, music. Well, well. Yeah, <laughs> tell me more. Um, but went to Jersey Boys thinking the same thing. I walked out of there saying, I remember we were, I walked past the um, lighting directors thing. I thought I would quit my job tomorrow and travel around the world. And do that, like really, I love to Unreal, do that. Eh? Something like that, like yeah. Because um, the yeah. DJing, the DJing, I used to come and help you with. Oh, um, yeah. that was fucking fun. It was so interesting. It that was something but, different. Oh, until we went to that bloody uh, St John Ambulance Christmas party. Yeah, I do remember Gen- that. All the way out of Jenica Bond. Yeah, it was. Too. And remember, I lost the main. I forgot the oh, main call. I one. I'll never forget that. So I had to fade songs in. Know how they began because if yeah. I had one that didn't fade yep. in i couldn't fade out lucky they were fucking great about it though oh, like, yeah they loved it that was it was good i think the guy well i'd done the guy's wedding two or three weeks before yeah, at northern yeah. race course oh fuck okay <clears throat> and then they said we really want to get you i said mate jenna combines a, a travel like yeah you're gonna be up for yeah, a thousand bucks fucking, yeah he goes yeah no worries and it's yeah. like oh, all right cool <laughs> well it's, it's like, still on um google Sling maps you 30, too, 32 dollars and um <laughs> Yeah, good vibes, DJ. Few karaoke. money, few money. Yeah, no. In the, in the um, oh, was it the Navarro, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we had it packed in. No, there. you used to give me a couple hundred. It was yeah. fucking mint. Yeah, but um, yeah, it still is. It's on at uh, at that address. Oh, I still get phone yeah. calls from DJ good telemarketers. Vibes. Uh, could I speak to the owner of Good Vibes DJ and Karaoke? <laughs> That's me. Said no, Darren Demello. <laughs> no, he's gone to Hollywood. He made it big, but um, it's a fucking vibe. Yeah, oh, but um, yeah, something yeah. in media, right? Yeah, I th- look, music, something music. I love music. Yeah. I'd, I'd quit my job today to become a, a DJ or something, like yeah. on a, a morning show or <clears throat> something like that. Like that Nathan, Nat and Sean. And, oh, they um, look like they have fucking have fun. Oh, yeah. my God. But at the same time, you wake up in a shitty mood. you got to switch off. No, and I know. Be, yeah, and I don't know if I like that either. Oh, that's, that's your job. Part of the fucking job. Yep. Well, well, that's pretty bloody perfect timing. Um Mate, I, I I appreciate you fucking coming over tonight. I didn't know how this was going to go. I'll be straight up with you. No, that's I okay. I didn't know you were going to be... I had backup questions. I didn't know how open you were going to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. And I, you've gone way above and beyond. Um, and no, fuck, I've, thank you for everything you've fucking done for me for this no, channel. No, you're welcome. You've always you don't backed to me, you motherfucker. No, I know, but that's, that's what family does. Yeah, no, it's a bit different fucking level. You've believed in me since I was the very, very start. No. When I got laughed at. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I suppose the way that I describe you to people and what half of your fan base, or probably three quarters to most of your fan base don't know, that Pete was so shy. Like, he... Still am. Fucking oath. Oh, but to the point where he'd want like take away one night I'd have to go down and order it for him through the drive through because he was too shy to go down and, <laughs> and talk talk to the the drive through yeah, chick yeah. like worried that oh, I'd can you get me some up. dinner while you're out and I was like yeah okay what do you want mate <laughs> yeah, rooster, lunch, roll, rooster roll with a coke change to a fanner <laughs> yeah no worries um, but to see what you're you've I don't know become or this you've done with this channel is I'm fucking proud of you like thanks mate I um, appreciate it I really do 
yeah like it's it's nuts like you i buy my own max tracks now yeah take it show you <laughs> buy my own shares. ticket item but I, i'm un, under the understanding that sherry said that i had to do this and then she was going to come on and do the next yeah she fucking better well, i'm she, telling you right now she promised me so. she has all right so you get to hear from the uh, the better half. <laughs> hey, no, but um, thank you and thank you for everything you did with fucking mum. I've nah, really that's all right, mate. properly. Nah, and, all good. Um, I love you. Nah, love I you too, mate. mate. Keep it up, hey. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> as long as you keep fucking handing me old cameras, mate. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Anytime. Love you. Love you too.